Welcome, I'm back. Where was I, do you ask? I'll tell you where I was. I went to Canada. I went to Canada for Canadian Thanksgiving. Yes, Canada has Thanksgiving and it's October 10th, or is it the first? Is it always October 10th or is it the first? No, it's always October 10th. I don't think it's the first or the second Sunday in October. It's a little bit earlier, so the families can go outside and celebrate Thanksgiving. It's basically the same as American Thanksgiving. Uh, no differences. Probably a little less prideful. Because, you know, Canadians are, tend to be a little more humble. I think. How's my levels? How's everything? It's been a while since I've been here. I think everything looks good. Am I a little too quiet again? Yeah. Oh, man. Still have that problem. But I, I went to Canada uh, first time since June of 2019 because of COVID. And I tell you, this is the real tragedy of COVID. The real tra tragedy is so many people died and their loved ones didn't have a chance to say goodbye, a proper goodbye. Like my sister died April of 2020. I went to her graveside, got to go. Uh, nice country graveside, very small, kind of in the middle of nowhere. It took me a... <laughs> I had to use GPS coordinates, literally, to find it. Um, but when my sister died, the doctors, the nurses said, no, you can't come in. Um, and my sister basically forced her way in, said to the nurse, I'm coming in. You're going to have to put me in handcuffs to stop me. And uh, they let her in. And uh, also my cousin-in-law is a nurse and so she got to say goodbye to my sister but because she died in april of 2020 that was if you remember that was the height of covid and that's when the fear level was off the charts because nobody knew what they were really dealing with and so there was even if i decided to go the day she died from arizona i definitely would have been quarantined for 14 days so they would have to Maybe it was possible, but uh, yeah, they would have to postpone the funeral for at least 14 days at least, probably closer to 16, 17, 18 days. But yeah, and then my favorite uncle died two months ago, or two months after my sister. He's the reason why I'm in Arizona. He had a PhD in chemistry, and he sabbaticaled here in Tucson, Arizona, and he said, uh, when, once after I got my first degree in, um, analytic, or in chemistry, he said, why don't you go to Arizona and uh, get your PhD there? And uh, they flew me out. And yeah, because of my uncle, I wouldn't be here. Because of my uncle, I probably wouldn't even be live streaming right now, I bet. Because, you know, the internet in Canada is, uh, they use polar bears pulling turbines to get the, the internet to work in Canada. It's so bad. <laughs> So, yeah, I got to visit the graveside. What's really interesting uh, about my... When I went to the, visit the graveside of both my sister and my uncle, two different graves, my parents, who are still alive, their tombstones were already up. Isn't that interesting? That some people actually get the tombstones placed in the gravesite before they're even dead. I didn't know that that was a thing, but that's a thing. And my dad actually bought a plot in one cemetery and uh, decided to, to move to a different cemetery. So he bought the plot and sold it for a big profit. <laughs> Only Mennonites can make money off of death. But my dad, yeah, he did it. And so now I'll probably be buried in the same place as my dad, my favorite uncle, uh, his dad, my grandfather. Like if you go into this, and again, this is a small, small country cemetery. You walk in and basically you see all my relatives. And then I visited my aunt, who's like 87. And we talked about death quite a bit, me and my aunt. I'm not the type of guy who's scared about talking about uncomfortable issues. And um, her husband, my uncle-in-law, died during COVID as well. And I asked her about his last moments, his last words. And she teared up, and it was really tough for her. 
But she basically said that she's ready to die. She wants to die. She's ready to die. She said she's prepared. Now, this is an interesting question for atheists. Could you say the same thing? I think a lot of atheists could. I'm one who I think I could say that. I'm prepared. I'm ready. I, I just want to die. But the reason why her confidence is so high is because she believes she's going to heaven when she's, when she's dead. So her fear has gone right down. I, maybe there's a little bit of, she's human, so there has to be a little bit of fear there that, uh, of the unknown that there's a chance she's wrong, but it's probably very, very small. So here's a question for um, non-believers, atheists, or even theists who don't believe in an afterlife. Is it bad to take away that hope for an afterlife for those who believe it? Like if I was on my deathbed and my wife, who prays that I'll come back to Christianity, I bet you she prays that daily. If I'm on my deathbed and she comes up to me and says, Doug, please, 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 because she, she believes in eternal conscious torment, Oof. which is terrible if your spouse is not a believer. Uh, w would I lie to give her comfort? Like, assuming I still don't believe, I'm on my deathbed, I know death is minutes away, I'm still conscious, cognizant. I hate lying, but I, I think I would have to, right? But then again, if she watches this live stream, then it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, I didn't think this through. If she watches this live stream um, and I, I die and I say, oh yeah, I, I've accepted Christ as my savior on my deathbed. And then she, a year later, finds this live stream from October 20th, 2022. She's then going to be suspicious. Oh, maybe my husband wasn't telling the truth. So maybe I shouldn't lie. Okay, my mind's made up. I'm not going to lie. I'll just have to... Um, Comfort my wife in a different way. I don't know. But anyhow, that's the reason why I was gone for uh, a while. I spent basically a week in Canada. Plus, it's always good to take a break. Hey, Greg Warner, don't call it a lie. Call it a counseling placebo. Greg, Greg is the guy I um, just made a short about, about whether his life would change if he left Christianity. And he kind of said, well, he went... And he had to think about it, right, Greg? But you're you're advocating I, I, I actually lie and just call it a concealing placebo. I like that. And no, I don't have my PhD in chemistry. What ended up happening is I got my master's in chemistry, realized that research work wasn't for me because my dad's a businessman, my uncle was the academic, and so there's both of those in in me. Um, and so I ended up getting a master's in business administration with a concentration in finance, evaluations. And uh, so I got two masters. In civil. I think two masters is always better than one PhD. You PhDs out there listening, you're probably not in your head. Eh, that's right. You're more well-rounded. You, you've been in two different grad schools. And by the way, I've never paid a dime for a tuition. And I tell my kids that. So if you have to pay for your university, odds are you maybe should go to technical school or internships instead. I thought Kenny's curse got you. No, 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 no. Kenny, Kenny made a prediction. He's Pastor Kenny. He made a prediction three months, four months ago now, I don't know, three and a half, that uh, something major will happen in my life and I'll be at a crossroads, an epiphany, some type of revelation. My life will change. He said it would happen soon. I said, how soon? I said, he said, soon. I don't know the exact date. And I said, well, it soon probably means under three months from now. He said, yeah, yeah, under three months. So I made a three-month date. Nothing. So Kenny, if you're listening, please come on and say you're a false prophet. Okay, the room is open. Uh, I guess I should post the link.
and I'm I'm in a good mood. I'm really I'm in a nice cuddly mood. I'm really like a teddy bear today. So if you are a theist and you want to come on and not have the like really aggressive Doug, here's your chance. Thanks for the donation, Nick Olson. What was the first sect of Christianity you went to after the Mennonites, and why didn't you stick with the Mennonites? Great question, Nick Olson. Uh, when you say sect you went to, I, Pentecostal was, this, I think, the second type of Christianity, the church I went to, but that was for like two or three years. After Pentecostalism, that's where I met my wife, by the way. After that was... Um, uh, Willow Creek model, secret sensitive type church, non denominational. For those of you who know, you, you know exactly it's not really a church. It's uh, more of a stage show to get non believers to come in, and it works. It works, but it's not really church. And as a Christian, I said, uh, number one, they burned me out because they burned talented people out, and I was talented. I had my, my wife more so, and they burned both of us out. Um, but it was a church like most of you in here who've never been in church or never been a Christian or any type of theist, you would enjoy it. You would go to the service and say, oh, wow, the music is high quality. Oh, wow, the drama. There's a drama, the short skit. Well, wow, and it's funny. I laughed out loud. Oh, my, there's some great practical advice here. And then odds are you'd go back another week. And then they would sneak in Jesus. I say that kind of a, in a facetious way. But they kind of did sneak in Jesus. They would very rarely, they would very rarely read from the Bible, which to, for the non-church, that's the right thing to do. You don't read from the Bible to non-church people, to non-Christians, because they don't value the Bible like you do. And if you do read from it, you have to really paraphrase and make it immediately applicable. Then after that, I went to, um, I think I came to Arizona after that, and went to Calvary Chapel <clears throat> Church, which is the same church as Mike Winger, same denomination. So trust me, I know, I know what most of these theists think before they even think it. Like the type of evangelical Protestantism that I critique, usually. I know them like the back of my glorious naked body. I really struggled in, with almost two full weeks without a Pine Creek stream. Don't you think demanding proof is a bit too tall of an order, considering you probably believe in many scientific theories and history books? I don't demand proof, Greg. I very rarely use the word proof. I uh, am the type of guy who says, who believes in provisional knowledge. And I, I know this sounds a bit um, postmodernist, is that right? I think we can say we know things, but we should always, always, always be open to the idea that we may be wrong. If you value truth, you must say that you don't currently possess it. That's why a great question to ask theists is, um, could Christianity be false? Could Islam be false? As soon as they say no, you got to change the way you dialogue with them. In fact, you might not even choose to dialogue with them. Hello from the West Coast. Welcome, British Columbia. <laughs> Maybe it was a typo. Poof instead of proof. See, what... Um, I'm big on saying that you might be wrong and having specific markers that will change your mind. Oh, nice one, Spooky. <laughs> 500 pie points to you. You made me laugh. Uh, so my markers would be something that would increase my confidence, the, 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 that thing inside you that says, 
mm, yeah, I, I, I believe this, uh, that Christianity is true, would be things like uh, amazing miracles. Not this, not anything that, you know, I've said this a thousand times, where there's an incantation, a request to a deity, and immediately it happens. That's, that breaks the laws of nature. How would you dialogue with them if they did say no and you did want to have a discussion? Well, I would still do the discussion, but it would be solely for the people watching. Here's another thing I want to say about uh, dialogues and discussions with people of different worldviews, different biases. I, I do not like ruminators. If, you're, if you <clears throat> were raised on a farm and you've seen cows chew their cud, I view many theists like cows chewing their cud. You know, they eat the grass, they put in their mouth, they chew on it for a long time, and then they swallow, and then they bring it back up and chew again, and then they swallow, and then they bring it, bring it back up and chew it again, over and over again. For the record, I don't like that. For those of you who watch the um, uh, that oh, that 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 lawsuit, uh, that criminal lawsuit from the pirates of the Caribbean guy, and uh, I even forget their names. What was her name? Brooke? No, start with B. Heather. And if you watch the lawyers, how they question people on the stand. I actually like that in a way, maybe not to that extreme, but I like that in everyday life. I hate compound sentences, or sorry, compound questions when you're trying to discuss these topics. How many times have you had a theist ask you a question? Yeah, Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, thank you. Think of, think of how those lawyers question them and others on the stand. And if you think about my live streams and how I question theists, it's very similar to a lawyer. What you want to try to avoid is questions with many premises, questions with many parts, questions that start with a paragraph preamble. This is why I hate people like Gary Habermas, for example. He will talk and talk and talk, and so you're on this road, and he's talking on this road, and then he and then he kind of goes to this road, and then he maybe gets back on the original road, but maybe not. So when I ask a theist, "Do you believe X?" That's all I'm asking, nothing more. And this is apologetic kryptonite. If apologists had to go on a stand and answer questions from Johnny Depp's lawyers, they would hate it. Oh, uh, speaking of hell oddity, I thought this was interesting here. And maybe someone who specializes in hell. Do we have anybody here who specializes in hell? I think I learned something new. I kind of knew this, but I want to see how true this is here. It's a literal. Let me turn up the volume, put this up. This is uh, Red Pen Logic. I, the last video I did on uh, Tim Barnett here, I uh, congratulated him. Thanks for the donation, Daniel Seamster. Does the flying man give hope, meaning, and purpose? Of course he does. <laughs> But that's another, uh, another interesting question. How do you replace hope, meaning, and purpose for a Christian or a Muslim who leaves that particular religion? Because I watch, I like crime movies, and I watched a crime movie the other day, and the lawyer said, not, with the jury, not only do you have to show a reasonable doubt, it's a lawyer for the defense, not only do you have to show a reasonable doubt, but maybe you need to show 
who else might have done it. So if it's a murder case, give reasonable doubt that that person murdered and then put something out there that says, and here's maybe who really did do it. And I think maybe, I've always said it's not my responsibility to re replace people's hope, meaning, and purpose. But I do think maybe I should give more recommendations so I can instill doubt in the Christian that Christianity is true and say, maybe you should look at this area in your life to get hope, meaning, and purpose. And what I think a good replacement is, it's still relationships, but instead of the relationship with this deity and with Jesus, it's a relationship with your mom, your dad, your wife, your spouse, your husband, your, your kids, your co-workers. Basically, Christianity and Islam already have that. They just attribute a deity on top of it. But anyhow, this, let's get back to hell. Place it's mentioned in the Bible. Oh, you're using the book of Matthew. That was the word Gehenna. Is he supposed to look like Jesus here? European Jesus? Translated from Hebrew into English. That's a literal place. Okay, so it's a literal place, just like I said. Right, Gehenna wasn't a great place. It was actually a valley in Israel where Jerusalem used it as like a dump. So they set everything on fire. <laughs> yeah, Gehenna was a... <laughs> it's funny to hear gay Jesus talk about hell. Fire. Some people actually practice child sacrifice there too. So. You're telling me the word was just actually a real place on earth. Uh-huh, I was telling the people about it and it was on fire. When Jesus talked about hell or Gehenna, was he referring to nothing more than a local burning garbage dump? Well, that's the claim. Oh, his whole thing is being gay Jesus? Okay. In this video, but there are some serious problems. Let's pull out the red pen and take a look. First, despite what you may have heard preached from the pulpit, there isn't any credible evidence that Gehenna was a burning garbage dump in Jesus' day. Yeah, is this true? This is what, what I want to know. There's no credible evidence for this? <clears throat> I wish uh, so many apologists don't hate me because I really want to know the answer to this. Like, uh, what's his name? The the recovering hell? No, the rethinking hell guy. What's his name? He would know the answer to this, but he won't talk to me. The red pen and take a look. First, despite what you may have heard preached from the pulpit, there isn't any credible evidence that Gehenna was a burning garbage dump in Jesus' day. In fact, scholars have traced the origin of this claim to Rabbi David Kimchi around AD 1200. So the earliest references to the valley being a burning garbage dump come a thousand years after Jesus. Yeah, is this true? I guess I could Google it, right? Chris Date, yeah, Chris Date would quickly tell me. Chris Date, are you here? Is this true? Did Ge the idea of Ge hell being Gehenna come in the year 1200? Can someone fact check this? So then, if it's not referring to a burning dump, what is Jesus referring to? This leads to the second point. The historical evidence suggests that in the time between the Testaments, the word Gehenna arose as a reference to future divine punishment by alluding to the prophetic judgment scenes in the Old Testament that take place at the Valley of Hinnom. The Valley of Hinnom was a literal place where the Israelites sacrificed their children in the fire to Molech. In response, God pronounces terrible judgment on Israel. Gen genetically modified skeptic actually went there. He has a vid. Yeah, but that's meaningless. The, the question is, is the hell in the New Testament, is it at all referring to this place? And when did this idea come about? That's what I want to know. Was it in the 1200s that hell's actually referring to a place, physical place here on earth? As a result, the valley became associated with divine judgment. So Jesus' hearers understood him to be talking about God's future judgment. Third, Jesus speaks of Gehenna as a punishment after death. He says, I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who can kill the body, and after that have nothing more that they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him whom after he has killed has authority to cast into hell or Gehenna. Finally, Jesus reference yeah see this now a lot of people um, don't like my methodology when it comes to let's say gays lesbians trans whatever all the sexual sins they don't like it when I say yeah the Christians right you're going to hell if you live this way and I want the whole world to hear that 
But Doug, you hurt their feelings. You make them cry. They, they, they just uh, are being who they are. And if you tell them they're going to hell, that's, I mean, but the point is, it forces them to make a choice. You either believe the scriptures or you don't. And I encourage people like Tim Barnett to force people to make that choice. You either feel bad and continue in that religion or you dump the religion. My choice would be for you would be to dump the religion. And here's another great verse that I wish is, would be preached more. I think if this were to be preached more, people would leave Christianity faster. Like, I wonder how many Christians actually know of this verse, that Jesus, this is in red, that Jesus himself <clears throat> apparently said, I don't believe Jesus actually said this, but maybe he did, who knows. Do not... Uh, but I warn you, whom to fear? Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Now, who's him here? Fear him who, after he has killed, has authority to cast into hell. Who has that authority? Now, some Christians actually say Satan. Some Christians say Jesus. I think your best bet here is Jesus. He has the authority. Because Jesus is God. So what Jesus is saying here is, don't fear a person who can hurt you physically. You should fear me. I mean, how can you remain a Christian after this type of threat? Please, please love me. But if you don't, you should fear me and what I'm going to do to you. What's he going to do to you? He's going to cast you into hell. How does he cast you into hell? Because <clears throat> he has the authority to judge. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to do a category error here, but every man listening to this live stream would think a woman is not so crazy and would turn around and run away for dear life if a woman said that to you. Love me, and I will give you paradise. But you reject me, oh, you're going to be in pain forever. Now, of course, that's a category error because we're talking about God, right? But just for fun, imagine Jesus is a, a woman you want to date. You would think that woman is crazy. So you know the trilemma argument that C.S. Lewis came up with? Liar, lunatic, or Lord? You could use Luke 12, 4 to 5 to make a good case that Jesus wasn't Lord, but he was nutso. He was a lunatic. He was cray cray. Greg Warner said, sounds like the average wife to me. Hey, 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 hey. There's a lot of, most women are great women. I'm a lover of women. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to get more women to come on my, uh, to be here. And with comments like that, Greg, you're scaring them all the way. Okay, let's get back to Tim Burnett has authority to cast into hell or Gehenna. Finally, Jesus' references to hell aren't limited to his use of the word Gehenna. He says that there will be a final resurrection of the dead, the righteous to life, and the unrighteous to judgment. He warns of eternal fire. Yeah, this is a pet peeve of mine. Uh, no, who cares about judgment? Like, it's the consequences of the judgment that you should fear weeping and gnashing of teeth and eternal punishment. So even if the video was right about Gehenna, it wouldn't take away from Jesus' warnings about the reality of future punishment after death. Yes, I think I agree with everything he said here. And please, I beg, I beg Christian apologists to talk about this more often. For very selfish reasons. I think you will turn off people to Christianity if you do this. But please let people know that there's this place after death that's horrible, that lasts forever, 
and pound it into people over and over again. Please let them know that. Please let the world know that just being a good person is not good enough. And if you're, if you live a certain way, if you live as your life as a liar or as a cheat or as a gay person, you will go to hell. Please preach this every day in your Sunday services and watch the people leave. Okay, I think we've got a caller. Maybe. Oh, I'm big. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you pretty well. And thank you for not having your uh, YouTube tab on. Yeah, you bet. Um, hey, uh, you were in uh, uh, Calvary Chapel, correct? Yes. Um, so I met with a men's uh, Bible study group last Friday at a local Calvary Chapel. And um, I was just wondering if you could give me any tips or things I could maybe talk to them about or questions or anything like that, that may be specific to Calvary Chapel that would help me out. Uh, so you're a non-Christian? Correct. Atheist? Yes. Yeah. Uh, how did you get invited, may I ask? Yeah, so I guess I wanted to talk to to some. You know, I mean, you do it online. I wanted to do it in person. And one Sunday, I was driving by the, the Calvary Chapel, and I saw a guy standing outside. I think he was kind of uh, working the, you know, security for the parking lot to make sure cars aren't getting broken into and stuff. And um, uh, it was top, stopped and talked with him for a little bit, and he invited me to come to the Friday group. And so I went last Friday and there was, um, I don't know, maybe eight guys there. And um, we just talked and it was, it was interesting. Um, it was a little difficult um, having a, a group like that and, you know, fielding a bunch of different questions and it going different ways. So it would have been a lot easier one-on-one. -on -one, but So were um, they asking you the questions or were you asking them the questions? A little bit of both. Uh, you know, I kind of let them do their Bible study thing and then, they kind of turned to me and said, well, what do you think? And I said, I don't believe any of it. And then that's when it kind of, kind of went off. Um, everybody was pretty polite, you know, a little pushback from, from a couple guys, but most, most of them were pretty good. Yeah. Well, just to let you know where they're coming from, Calvary Chapel men are very conservative. They tend to distrust higher education. Um, they're, they're very much, if you know Mike Winger, they're, they'll be very much like, like him. They're very masculine. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's funny that you said that. There was, you know, they were having a discussion and I wanted to, to say something. And I'm just, I'm not a person that interrupts. I kind of wait for a, a pause before I, before I jump in. And um, someone noticed that I wanted to speak and, I, and he said, go ahead. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt. And one of the men said, uh, well, you should interrupt because women are who are the ones that sit and wait. And oh, just, yeah. But uh, yeah, I definitely noticed the just in their little conversation, they are very skeptical of government and very skeptical of of the medical field now because of COVID. Um, yeah, you could really sense that. Yeah. So I would ask very simple, short questions like, "Why do you believe?" God, uh, a God has anything to do... No, you shouldn't say a God. Say, why do you believe God has anything to do with the Bible? Mm -hmm. And as simple as that question is, you'll see a lot of the men there struggle with that question. Yeah, I kind of know, you know, in hindsight, I kinda, that, that question kind of entered my head. I didn't ask it at the time because they would often go back to Scripture, you know, well, the Bible says this and this, and, you know, I just, I, I didn't think of it at the time to just go, well, well what do I care, you know? And then what? just take it one step at a time. Like if, if you ask the question, why do you believe God has anything to do with the Bible? And they give, and one guy pipes up, well, because of the prophecy. And then say, okay, well, which is the best one in your opinion? And then have them say it. And then ask, how would you make this prophecy better? Right. Yeah. Now, and then if they say, okay, I believe the... Um, the Bible's God's word because of eyewitness testimony that uh, 
Jesus referred to the scriptures and he did these miracles and say, okay, um, why do you, would you believe a man who, that people write about that says he claims to be God and does miracles, would you believe that that actually was God? Not Jesus, but a different man. And they're going to say, no, but, but, but. And it, and you'll just, it, it's kind of fun. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen me do the flying man, but you just basically vamp off that type of idea of you give a outsider test for faith, something that they will probably say, no, I don't believe this, but make it exactly the same as the Bible. And then ask, okay, why do you not believe it there, but you do believe it here? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. I, I did a little bit of that. You know, I kind of, you know, if they gave me an answer, I could, I, a few times I said, well, a Muslim could respond the same way or, or someone at the LDS church down the street could say the exact same yeah, thing. Yeah. I would strongly encourage you. Don't say the word Muslim. Don't say the word Mormon. Don't say any other religion's name specifically, because that will end up going down a, a rabbit trail, a rabbit hole of of just other well we know islam is false we know mormonism is false because of x and you can save all that time by just making it completely a nebulous false religion and that's why i use the flying man okay yeah yeah that makes sense there, there was one time where they they brought up the the 500 uh, witnesses and i i kind of played dumb and i said um oh like who how many who, who how, how do we know the 500 happened and they said oh, well paul said it and i said and then who did he who he was saying that to the people in corinth right and yep yep um do we know uh where the 500 witnesses were at and they all just kind of looked at each other and i said no and i said oh that'd be an interesting thing to maybe research and then the next time we get back together we can we can talk about it so you know it's just something that they just had never thought of before yeah, and another question I, I've been asking this past year is, okay, if, if all we had was Paul's letters, specifically 1 Corinthians 15, would you believe that Jesus was God and rose from the dead? And I'm very curious to know, like some will say yes and some will say no to that question, but I think most will say no. But it, that question is very powerful because it will get to the fact that they just don't believe it because the Bible says it. Yeah. They need more. So you got to get them to admit that just because Paul says it doesn't mean it's true. And it's, I think a, a reasonable, smart man at, Christ, at Calvary Chapel can admit that, but it will cause such severe cognitive dissonance in them because they've been trained to think this is all God's word, but yet they know that's incredibly reasonable that just because Paul said it doesn't make it true. Right. You know, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for is that, you know, I, I can't imagine that they would talk about that cognitive dissonance in front of the rest of the group. But just to get those wheels spinning for the rest of the day or the rest of the weekend of them having to kind of fight with that in their head. So. Yeah. Or you can ask them about the problem of evil, the real problem of evil that starts before creation. The very first guy I spoke with that invited me to the group, I kind of introduced that to him uh, a, a little bit. So yeah, I'd like to do that with the big group too. So we'll see. Because I think that's a major, I, I know theists don't see it this way, but I think that's a major contradiction that a God that hates sin would not desire to create something that would lead to what he hates. Yeah, I, you know, I like how um, you and... And, and Danny, kind of how you would uh, go after that topic and, and make it just super simple. What's better, a world with sin or without sin, you know, and just kind of yeah. really tackle it at a very simple and basic level. So I appreciate that. Yeah, but these guys will not like super simple. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you make it simple, I, it's, it's, there's less maneuvering room. Like there's... Um, they are less likely to use apologetic tactics on you because it's just, it's, you almost got to imagine yourself when you're talking to these guys, pretend you're a five-year-old boy, you're in kindergarten and they're your teachers and you're asking very simple, short questions that 
um, they don't want to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, and that's the other thing I, m- I mentioned that it's hard to do it in a, in a group. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we, we talk about the 500 for a minute and then someone else brings something else and then we've forgotten about that and we're on to something else now. And so that's the difficulty in it. Well, you know, if they would allow you, uh, you can use the group to ad- your advantage and ask them to bring, take out their pen and paper and that you'll ask 10 questions and have them each answer on the piece of paper and then compare answers. Yeah, I, I didn't, you know, we, there was one time I, and I pointed out where we had some people that had different views Two guy, you know, one said, you're saved. Uh, God gives you um, the, the ability to believe basically. And then another one said, no, it's a choice. And when I recognized that, I said, oh, it sounds like we have difference here. And yeah. then we kind of, you know, it, it was fun to kind of point that out. Yeah, I would say Calvary Chapel people are probably 80% non-Calvinist, but there are a few Calvinists in there. Okay. And that's always fun to, uh, okay, listen, Christians, I'm, this is the conniving atheist talking. It's always fun to set up divisions between the, the Calvinists and the non-Calvinists. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, good luck with that. Maybe call back someday and let me know how it went. Okay, that sounds great. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. Yep, bye. Bye. See, we're infiltrating Christians. You hear that? We atheists are infiltrating the depths of your Bible studies. Oh, evil. What's going to happen? We're so dangerous. Oh, yeah, Testify had something here. By the way, Testify blocked me on Twitter and YouTube. (sighs) Let's see what he says here. I don't know who needs to hear this. But you're probably not so biased towards Christianity that you can't properly assess the evidence for it. I've ran into several Christians with doubts who are so aware of their own bias that they begin to question their own ability to use their own rationality. This can be a form of self-gaslighting. These doubters have sometimes picked up on this by listening to counter-apologists who are... (laughs) Uh, Nathan, you made it. You made the cut. Same with you, Paul. Focus more on pointing out bias in Christians than they are in assessing the art. Oh, and Anthony. Anthony, you made the cut too. Let's see if I'll make the cut. Arguments themselves. And obviously these counter apologists aren't neutral either. Or it's just the current cultural climate that we live in that often seems to think that it can explain people's beliefs by pointing out their bias. Either way, don't be paralyzed by the fear of your own bias. There's a vast difference between acknowledging your own bias and doing your best to be intellectually virtuous and being so scared of making a decision because you think that your bias is clouding your judgment. I, I agree with what he's saying, but I'm kind of perplexed that he has to say it. Like I, maybe he's talking to people of a certain personality type that I just don't relate to. Because I don't think I've ever been paralyzed by fear because of my biases or because I'm trying to control for them. So it's weird because I kind of agree with them, but yet I don't feel, I don't emote, I don't get the reason to even say this. Don't fall for that trap. I don't know who needs to hear this. Okay, we got someone else here. Hate me or I'll love you. Oh, it's Nathan. Wait, what do I do? I can hear you twice. Uh, no, no, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd come in just because of that clip I saw myself. Um, I was going to ask you about your talk about death as well with your auntie because I want to hear. I want to know what happened in that conversation. Okay, what do you want to start with? Let's start with testify here. Let's start with testify. Yeah, I 
I understand that you can't relate to that because of your personality type, but I think I think that perhaps what he might be describing is um, Christians who might be coming to him and saying, yeah, okay, I've recognized like that I have these biases, maybe emotional needs and things like that for Christianity to be true. So I'm just not assessing this evidence objectively. And it sounds like testifies uh, at Eric's advice is just to say, yeah, just be biased. <laughs> I don't think he's Maybe saying. I, I don't think he's saying that. Uh, I, I think he's just his main point is don't be paralyzed by this fear that you can acknowledge your own biases and still make rational decisions. Yeah, that might be right. Um, that I mean, that might be that might be what he's saying, and I guess it would depend on the particular circumstances of the people who might be talking to him. But for a lot of Christians, I can imagine who are or. It wouldn't even have to be Christians. It could just people who are in, um, you know, like religious communities where they're in pretty deep and it, it affects their lives in all these ways and things. I mean, I can imagine, uh, you know, you have some moment where you look at that, you look at your whole life and you go, yeah, how can I even look at this evidence objectively? Because it literally is like everything I do in the evenings. It's yeah. like my, my relationships, my, I, I just can't look at this evidence obje and be like, yeah, maybe I should suspend my judgment about this for now. And then you don't yeah. need someone like Eric saying, look, but we've got, you know, the, the, here's what some ancient author says, and here's a Bayesian formula. And it's like, well, dude, like, I've just realized that my life is like massively um, tied into this thing. Well, I'm curious to know if Eric would agree with me here. I, I think I could deconvert every Christian listening, every Muslim listening, um, maybe Christians, if I say this, if you can actually do this for, I don't know, a certain amount of time, don't care about your sins needing to be forgiven. Don't care about it. Don't care about heaven. Don't fear about hell at all. Even, you know, pretend ah, I might exist, but yeah. Have that type of attitude. Don't care about what your parents or your spouse will think if you left. Just be a little more dead inside and let go of all that and then look at the evidence. And use the outsider test for faith. If you do that, you're out. I mean, it's, I think it's, very it's, almost hard, it's almost guaranteed you're out. I think what you're describing is is very hard for people to do, though. Like even, I mean, maybe I I think I'm a lot more emotional than you as a person. But even today, um, when I was getting like comments on YouTube videos from uh, Christians, I started to gaslight myself and think, Oh, I, I've said the word gaslight, so you're going to... Uh, <laughs> and Eric did too. <laughs> um, I, like, I, I genuinely started to think, you know, is my whole life like a lie? Have I been tricked by like Satan into loving V? And then she's like manipulated my thoughts to the point that, um, that actually Christianity is true. But now, um, you know, now my thinking's been all messed up by like sin and... Um, you know, loving someone who's not a Christian, stuff like that. And that's because of, I think, the emotional, like, trauma of leaving that's still with me to some degree, that, like, I went through that psychological process. Maybe you just don't have whatever that, like, psychological issue is, but I think a lot of people do kind of experience that. Yeah. Well, I'm not autistic, but <clears throat> I think there's that's the reason why a lot of autistic people are not theists. Yeah, yeah. I think there's actually a lot of evidence about that. Yeah. <laughs> So it's really interesting that uh, the more emotional a person is, the more uh, risk adverse they are, the more likely they are to stay in this version, testifies version of Christianity. Possibly, but you get people, yeah, you, you might be right. Because um, then that would be like the Jonathan McClatchy's and stuff, right? Yeah, Jonathan McClatchy is very different than Eric, I think. I think Jonathan McClatchy is just a product of his environment. His dad's so pastor, right? Oh, I didn't know that. I That's think so. Something. Right. Yeah. And this is part of his sunk costs. Like he's, for years and years, has made a career kind of out of this. I think he makes money off this. Maybe not. I didn't know. But I, I do think in his case, there's it's like... It's like there's a very fast kind of like computer program running, you know, with all the facts that he comes out with. But it's like it's kind of like the lights are on, but nobody's home with him. You know, like he's, it, it's like there isn't a person listening. There's just this like apologetics algorithm. That's what I struggle with with John, Jonathan. But he's 
but he's similar to what you're saying i think in the fact it, like he's just this dispassionate that he claims what he's doing is just dispassionately evaluating yeah. evidence and arguments the more i think about the more like even if he is autistic i don't he's not as dead inside as i am like when i asked him the poof or drown question he That's seemed yeah. terrified <laughs> terrified of going against his god yeah i don't know if that was I don't know if that's like emotional in the sense of like real or if it's just because he's like yeah may maybe it's not maybe not being contrarian or something is being emotional i don't know um, like when you when a person says i i just trust that god made the right decision and flooded the earth i just i would go with what god <laughs> did because i just trust god like when you say stuff like that what goes through in my, in my mind is you are terrified of this god that you serve I think that's right for, for, for most people or they see it, it as a form of blasphemy to question God's decision because that's what the, you're, they're essentially doing, right? They're going, well, I know that right. this is what God did. I'm questioning it by doing otherwise. And that's like something sacrilegious or to like but if a, if, yeah. If a, if a Christian were in here right now and said, Doug, it's, it's blasphemy to go against what God said and, it, and I'll ask, okay, why is this version of blasphemy bad? Like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. I would encourage a Christian to blaspheme God and see what happens. Nothing. <laughs> right? Well, for, for a lot of people, it's the, I, I think, again, maybe this is something where people might differ from you, but it could be like the social pressure, because I think you end up getting kind of socialized in a religious community into not voicing, you know, like places where you disagree or something, because that's looked down upon in Bible studies to be, you know this person with all the questions or whatever who isn't nodding their head and going along with it you, you, you there are all these sort of like ticks and cues i think where, where you get feedback from the community that or are you saying that saying the right thing are you saying they're not so much terrified of, from god they're terrified of their losing their community why well, the idea that of saying something that goes against like the in-group's belief i think is something that people get like deeply yeah. conditioned into kind of like doing so so then if um so then in order to say i would do something other than god that's like deeply going against that behavior of not listening to that like voice that has like these questions or or trusting yourself you know you kind of gaslight yourself into the correct religious answer to yeah gaslighting. yeah yeah if if you're a christian and you're willing to say you know what i'm willing to lose my whole community and because i know i'm good enough to find a new one you're more likely to leave christianity yeah, and I, I think I think that drives um, not obviously people aren't thinking like that consciously, but I do think that the the kind of like community or for a lot of people as well, I think their relationships become dependent on it too. Like I think because they get married within the framework of the religion, so then they're getting sexual access through um, the religious paradigm, and so like leaving it is like oh, what's going to happen to the relationship? What's going to happen to sex and stuff as well? I think I think that that. Um, massively motivates and traps a ton of people men and women alike um, hey, hey i wanted to ask you way. about what i said about um tim barnett here that people should christians should like tim barnett preach hell more <laughs> it depends what what mood i'm in because sometimes when i'm leaning more towards religion i'm like yeah i like a healthy like nuanced version of christianity that um has something good to offer but then sometimes I do think, you know, like th there's that clearly harmful bit. And I think that if Christians just went with that harmful bit, then it's like saying the quiet part out loud. And yeah. Then it would enable everyone to just go, yeah, that's crazy. That's bad. We don't want anything to do with it. That with like the L the views on LGBT issues as well. Um, some people's views about like having a, a theocracy or a Christian, well, maybe not in some parts of America now. Who's uh, the Republican candidate for Arizona here is pretty, uh, pretty wild. My golfing <laughs> partner loves, loves her. The guy I golf but, with every Monday. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I don't, like, like I think for most normal people, if Christians say the, the kind of quiet part out loud, they're just going to go, yeah, I don't want anything to do with that. And it would help people to leave faster. And yeah, but then you end up with it just a reformation of Christianity into re, um, progressive Christianity, right? Um, in terms of what's left, yeah, then you just end up with progressive. But I don't know that that's all that bad. It depends. I mean, it can be, it can be bad 
um, sometimes, but I think a lot of the progressive type Christians are also like, you know, I'd much rather be neighbors with them. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. I should do a poll here. How come I don't have my poll option anymore? Did you lose it too? It's been taken away. I've not tried it recently, so I don't know. Oh, no. Yeah, I still have it. Okay. Um, is it better to stamp out No, I'm getting an advert from you. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. The first thing, as soon because I was waiting for it to go live, and as soon as it went live, I got an advert as well. So. Two pads. Um, did you see Biden's uh, statement today about whether the political instability in the UK would affect the US economy. <laughs> no, I didn't see that. So so someone asked him, do you think Liz Truss made the right decision resigning? Uh, and he's like, oh, you know, give some political answer. I think she did a good job. They'll sort it out. And they said, are you, are you worried that this will affect the US economy with all the instability going on? And he said, um, oh, they're, they're too small over there. It's inconsequential. So I thought you would have liked that. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna, I'm curious to see. So what's your answer to this question? Is it better to stamp out Christianity or reform it? Stamp it out to atheism or reform it to progressive I think I think reform it. And the reasons why I'll go with reform it are because I think people have got a fairly good handle on what it is. And I think if you stamped it out completely, you just you'd get some kind of like weird um i don't know QAnon shamanism like people people would just find something else that's weird but we didn't quite understand and it was might not be as safe so far it's 60 40 oh 55 45 stamp it out is winning yeah there's a lot of uh, angry new atheists in you <laughs> Wow, this is very interesting. It looks like my live stream audience is divided on this question, mm. almost equally. But I, I agree with you. I think they will just replace it with something else that's maybe even crazier. Exactly. That's but then the, I would ask the same question about that belief. And so you just keep... <laughs> play whack-a-mole and just keep stamping out, you know, until there's nothing left. Yeah. Until we're all just moist robots. But you could get something better as well, I guess. Um, you could get, you know, a religion that's sort of, le like, maybe crazy, but less harmful. It doesn't, like, teach people that they're broken. But maybe, actually, the research on cults, I think, shows that you need to kind of tell people that they're broken and messed up to get them, yeah. um, like, that really strong... Yeah, and I think the research also shows the crazier the beliefs, the more it coalesces the group, right? So oh, yeah, yeah, when you commit to it publicly. Yeah. So if you like that's why the flat earthers are so strong as a group. That's why Christianity is so strong. Like progressive Christianity, I I agree with the fundamentalists that they are more likely to become atheists than a fundamentalist. Yeah, that's probably right. But on the other hand, the data says that doesn't the data show that? I think they are leaving more like progressive Christian churches and, and it's like fundamentalists who I, I'm not sure actually, because that was probably a few years ago though. So it could be different. But doesn't the data show that fundamentalists tend to, it's more like an on off switch. It's like Christian, and oh, okay. then, then they learn something like look at me, <laughs> look at right. apologia and also boom. Yeah. Atheist. Oh, right. Yeah. And like the flat, the, um, people who are like flat earth Christians or, uh, but maybe it's just a matter of time yeah. duration that it's not so much fundamentalists leave to atheism more so than progressive is just they do it faster and progressives like you got the randall rousers <laughs> who i'm sure at some point in his life was more conservative or fundamentalist than he is today who he still believes in demons and uh, I, really I guess maybe, stuff. maybe maybe what happens in the progressive case though is that at least their, their like modified version of Christianity is in touch with the normal sort of reality that we participate in. I think the, th the problem is with the people 
in the more extreme uh, versions of Christianity is when they try to maintain their belief in the face of um, all these problems with those beliefs, with what most normal people believe in their morality and how they behave, is that then I think they become more um, sectarian and more sort of opposed to the ways of the world. And that's how you end up with um, people who are willing to, you know, like march on the Capitol building in militias or whatever um, to save the nation. <laughs> So yeah, it it almost went to fifty fifty, but now it's back to sixty forty. It's interesting. Yeah, I don't know where I, I haven't answered it. I don't know where. I like reform, like progressive Christianity, just really makes me throw up. <laughs> I hate it. At least with the fundamentalists, you know, yeah, what they believe, I know where you they stand. Like, like I, I hate this fuzzy, touchy feely religion. So I'm going to say stamp it out. <laughs> and then, uh, but I agree with you. Something else is like crystals is going to replace it. Well, at least for some. Let's stamp that out next. Just keep stamping out all the fires. Alex Jones has got to pay $1 billion now in uh, reparations. That's a, he's only worth, uh, I think, $200 million. Uh oh He's in trouble. Okay, let's end this poll. Okay, so... Oh, if it, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like you want to talk about my my? I was going to say my, how yeah. yeah, how did that conversation go? If you're because what I want to know is, you know, we all know that behind the kind of hard exterior, there's there's a soft emotional person, um, who <laughs> who taught who has these deep conversations with their family members. And so, what I want to know is how did this conversation about death go with your aunt? And did you did you um, sort of. Did the atheism come through in, in the advice or whatever you were giving her? Or what you were oh, no, no, I, no. Definitely, I try to keep that out of it. But how did it start? I basically, yeah, I'm not scared. To, I was in her um, room in an old folk care home. My dad, my mom were there, and my son. And uh, we were just talking about nothing, really. And then I decided I wanted the conversation deep. So I asked, uh, hey, Aunt Betty, tell me how... My uncle John died. Right. Tell me what happened that day. And she went in detail. Well, we got up in the morning, blah, blah, blah. He, uh, he had pneumonia. And, but he was a stubborn Mennonite Christian who didn't want to go to the doctor. Right. And, but yet he was having trouble breathing. And so he finally said, okay, I'll go to the doctor. But I need to get dressed first. So she's telling the story of him getting dressed. He goes to put on his pants, so he stands up, and then he falls over backwards, coma, Whoa. and never woke up. And, That's crazy. And the day before, uh, she, my Aunt Betty asked him, hey, we need to go to the doctor. You're really sick. And he said, maybe tomorrow. And then that tomorrow was the day he died. So, yeah, it's... And she's crying through most of this as she's telling the story, but um, but I don't think she's ever told. I, I bet you my dad had never even heard that, like what exactly right, yeah. happened. Well, because you can't talk about uh, feelings and stuff, right? You're all uh, tough <laughs> men. <laughs> well, no, my dad is uh, my uncle, the my favorite uncle, the one who died two months after my sister. He was like me. I was like him. Uh, my dad is quite more emotional than I am. And so you did, did the conversation turn to like, where do you think you go, you go after you die or anything like that? Was that not? Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't go take it there. But then she said something like um, that. I'm ready to die uh, because I'm prepared. And I knew I didn't have to ask. I knew exactly what she meant by that. And your, your dad knows you're an atheist, right? Yeah. Because he's so did he say anything to you about that or? no no they're they're no. pretty uh careful although my uh thanksgiving dinner no what was it it wasn't thanksgiving dinner it was a different conversation but my mom was telling about the day my dad almost died of cancer right. he was on a ton of chemo but one of the chemo treatments uh went bad and uh he couldn't eat because he had uh, cancer of the intestines and so no food and um, my mom prayed some type of prayer that this chemo will come out of him or that 
it would go away because this chemo was killing her husband. And according to her, apparently within minutes, he started vomiting all the chemo out. Okay. And she looked at me, my mom looked at me and said, see, this is proof. Anyone <laughs> who tells me that God doesn't exist. Well, yeah, she's done the Pine Creek test. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But then, you know, and I didn't say a word. I didn't say anything like, well, how many people vomit out their chemo? Like, how often does yeah. that happen? And how many people vomit out the chemo and still die? You know, these yeah. are questions that someone, a seeker of truth would ask. And well, what's funny is previously, uh, three or four years before th this, my dad, when I was home, was saying how grateful he was to God that he God saved his life. And... Um, I asked, but didn't you have friends in that same hospital who died of the same cancers you right. had? Right, yeah. And he said, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and, I, and I said, where do you think they are right now? In heaven. They were Christians. Yeah. So why are you thankful to God that you're stuck here on earth suffering? Yeah, rather than Rather with than friends. with your friends in heaven who are now having a gorgeous buffet. You, you've lived a long life. Like You're viewing this as a reward from God when really maybe God's punishing you. Right, <laughs> <laughs> and you know yeah, what? That's a mind I, I I didn't say it in those exact words, but basically just as forthright and and hard. And my dad looked at me and he said, "You could be right." I I was impressed. Oh my god! Yeah, he, yeah. He admitted that this actually the answer to the prayer could be more of a punishment than a reward. Well, he's got to. He's got to do that. <laughs> yeah, I think he was stuck. Yeah, yeah. But I wow. encourage. I encourage uh, atheists listening to have these types of deep conversations with the really old people in your life. Um, they they love it. Like my my dad, my aunt, they don't want to talk about the weather. They don't want to. They want to talk about real deep stuff because they've lived a long life. They've seen it all. Most of the life is boring to them already, uh, except for this stuff, right? Because this is I don't know with uh, with climate change, we get some new weathers now. Uh... <laughs> 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 yeah anyway i can let you go and have so hopefully have some theist callers okay um, yeah they're scared to come in with both of us here all right cheers Doug. see ya so yeah have have these deep conversations don't be scared how's my audio levels am i loud enough I follow Christ. The book is one source of his existence. Yeah, Walter, we know you. We know you need this. Keep, be the best Christian you can be, Walter. Do you know if any of your family have watched or do watch your channels much at all? Oh, what's funny, a separate is I made a joke when I was in Canada for Thanksgiving about giving someone pine points. And my brother-in-law looked at me and laughed. And everybody else went, what? What are you talking about, pine points? And no one followed up with, what do you mean? They just, I could tell in their expression that some of them were confused, but my brother-in-law wasn't. So I have a feeling my brother-in-law watches some of my live streams and... Most of my family does not. Orchid, the man who, who, What's up? the man who just needs to know that he's right. <laughs> so, I have a test for you, Doug. Are oh. you ready? Yes, I'm ready. I have 12 questions and uh, oh. would you, 12? are you scared to answer them? I don't know them, so how can I be scared of them? <laughs> well, a lot of atheists have a problem when I start asking these questions. So Okay, can you do me I'll a favor, though? If you have 12 questions, please don't make them compound questions with long premises. Like, are they each, like, short sentences? Oh, well, no. Well, uh, see, this, this uh, you probably came late, but I, I told my audience, this is what I hate. I hate it when theists ask me questions. Okay, here's an example of what I hate. 
Well, they're given that the uh, that scientism you can't be proven. And the blah, 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 blah. So no, no, my no, question no. for you is, like is the blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. I hate that. So, but if no, you want to ask uh, me a short question, I bet you we can punch out these 12 in uh, under a minute. First, you need to understand, this is a test. I call it the test of definitive apostasy. Okay. Right? So these are, are all of the claims uh, of Christianity, which I want to know if you uh, outwardly reject. Okay. Right? This, yeah, this will be easy. Go ahead. Do you reject that God is the supreme being and creator yes. of all things? that are not himself and he's the ultimate the absolute from which all things yes i reject it I, you, so if i reject part of it then i reject all of it so on to the well let me let me finish every question and then you say reject or is it that is that okay okay, okay we'll take up precious time okay do, do you re reject that history was written in advance in scriptures yeshua is the one who was prophesied to bring the eternal covenant yes that his arrival the place and birth was pre-announced when and where he would live and uh, how he would die what he would teach and do and that there was such expectation that men came from afar in order to see him yes i reject do you reject that there was a man called yeshua who said i'm the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me and that his life was something that touched and transformed time that one's a little tougher like um, a man could have said that uh, but i still lean towards yes i reject it do you reject that through his incarnation we can share and participate in the charity of the divine trinitarian life which is the eternal form of existence to begin with to be adopted sons in the same relation to the father the son has from eternity Yes, I reject. You, you know that you, what you're doing here. This is actually very smart of you. You're just preaching, in the and disguising it as some type of test. You're using this as an opportunity to preach. Do you want to? Uh, My go? guess is I'm going to say reject for the next seven. How many? Eight? Do we have left. So, like for example, let's skip. Go to number uh, ten. Do Do you reject Jesus was a beloved, rejected, exalted son like Joseph? prophet before Moses, a priest. Yes, I reject it. Jesus, this is just all preaching. An offering in place of Isaac, a king from the line of David, a wise counselor <laughs> above Solomon, and a champion like Joshua. Yeah, see, I, I'm, so just assume I reject all 12. And you okay, can... do you reject? No, 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 Jesus no, 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 we're done. I knew that you wouldn't want to go through this. No, because... Atheists are scared of this. All, all the time. No, it's not because all, I'm scared. The, yeah. It's because yes, you are scared. all you're doing is preaching. Yeah, no, you're resisting the truth, Doug. In your why, do, why do you think it's the truth? Well, do you want to go through the questions or not? I told you I reject Just all say 12. say no. I reject all you 12. Didn't hear them. I went through uh, five of them, six of them, half. Yeah, I, I knew that you were you would be scared, but okay. Why do you think, may I ask, why do you think I'm scared? Well, you don't want me to finish uh, the question. Okay, but there could be other explanations than fear, right? Why do you think I'm scared? Yeah, because uh, you don't want to uh, outwardly uh, reject all of these things because you, you still uh, carry... You feel in in your soul deep. Okay, how many of them? That, how many of them did I reject so far? It doesn't matter. You need to reject all of them. I need to reject all of them, or yeah. else I'm scared. Yeah, I call it the test of definitive apostasy. Okay, can you read it really fast? We're, we're, we did do ten. You, we did. You reject the Jesus. Well, hang on, we're sick. on number five. Number five. Do, but you read it super fast. Do you reject that Jesus healed the sick, blessed the young, regarded the age, cleansed the lepers, defended the feeble, delivered the captives, discharged the debtors, and forgave the sinners? Reject. Number six. Would you reject that Jesus achieved what Israel couldn't, that he was tempted by hunger for 40 days, which had caused Israel to grumble against God? He's tempted to worship a false god, which Israel did in creating the golden calf, and that according to Matthew, he was leading a new exodus. This time, not from a political tyrant whose armies are drowned in the sea, but from sin and death, which are destroyed in waters of baptism. I reject. Number seven, faster. Do you reject that kings feared him? Herod couldn't kill him. Pilate couldn't find any fault with him. The witnesses couldn't agree against him, that he committed no crime, yet he crucified him, and that he was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. Reject. Number eight. 
do you reject that Yeshua was covered with a purple and scarlet robe, took the curse upon himself, was, tor was tortured, mocked, killed, darkness covered the land from six to nine, and through resurrection he upended the symbol which was the archetype of death, fear, humiliation for humans, and made it into something that represents life, hope, and redemption? Reject, number nine. You reject that through the passion of Christ, the concept of someone who suffers the death of a slave emerges or it turns out to be the creator of all, can give dignity to people who previously would not have been afforded dignity by anyone, and that in a sense the lowest of the low can be the highest. Reject. Uh, we already did number 10, so go to number 11. Two more. Do you do you, do you reject that in Yeshua dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, that we are truly human in Christ, who is the epitome, the exemplar, the ultimate icon or perfect perfect image of God in time and space, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power? Reject. Number Last one, number 12. Do you reject that the Catholic Church was established by Jesus? He aligned his authority with Kephar Peter gave him the keys or the power to bind and loose. And this church today has been based upon great a number of miracles. It has been increased by charity, nourished by hope, strengthened by antiquity, confirmed by the succession of bishops. Reject. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you agree that I rejected, listen to all 12 and rejected all 12? The last one. Do you reject that he has always been and always will be? He had no predecessors and will have no successors. His name is above every name and that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Reject. Do you agree that okay. I've listened to all of your questions and rejected them? Yeah, I will just say to you this, Doug. You really need to repent. And I hang will, on, I hang say, on. Do you take back, the, do you take you, back that I was fearful? No, you, you, you did it, but uh, you were... Am I the first like, one to do it? Yes, you, you are the first. Yeah, because I'm the first one to have enough patience for you. That's okay. all it's a, that's all it is. Okay. Most atheists wouldn't have Doug, the patience I that I had. You. I will pray for you, Doug. Oh, 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 oh. what exactly are you going to pray for? But that you repent and that you come to Christ, man. I, Do I really you believe I have free will? Be saved. Yes, if you reject him, you uh, you will lose this uh, precious gift, but uh, I know, but so I what good is your prayer? What good is your prayer if I have free will and I'm, I use it to reject him? Um, well, uh, we, we can uh, we participate together in this uh, in this life. So uh, I, I through me, you can maybe receive oh, uh, some grace. Orchid, you I want couldn't. you to know that your prayers will be a waste of time because your God has given me free will that I've exercised to reject him. So why are you praying? You're praying Sir, against, you, you're praying you against have... God's will. God's will is for me to exercise my free will as I see fit, and I see fit to reject. No, I can be the, I can be the instrumental cause through which, uh, for example, you can get more grace than you uh, would. Oh, you, know, you, so you do you one. think you think you might be the the instrumental cause to my reconversion? No, 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 not not like that. But uh, maybe uh, giving a push, or maybe uh, sowing a seed, or something like that. Ah, you think you can sow a seed in me? Yes. Do you think That's I can sow a seed in you? Preaching. No, I'm I'm firm in my faith, as you see. You're firm in your faith. What if your faith is wrong? How would you ever get out of it? If you're firm in your faith. And it's wrong. You're stuck. Okay, Doug. I, I will pray for you, man. See you. <laughs> Don't you hate it when it's, an atheist asks a reasonable question? No, no, Doug. You can't plant seeds in me because I'm firm. I'm stubborn. I won't change. Well, but what if you're wrong? Well, I guess I'll die wrong. Have I ever reached the 500 witnesses chat-wise? Yeah, I've been over 500. Don't go sowing any seeds in me. My wife will be jealous. Oh, ho, ho, ho. High school humor. He felt the doubt creeping in. I think this particular Christian 
needed to do what he did for psychological reasons. He feels, well done, good and faithful servant. You preach the gospel pretty comprehensively using those 12 or 13 questions asked of an atheist. You know how much of, of the word of God Orchid got through to the airwaves there? And then he used and manipulated me to say, you're scared if you don't answer that. That was genius. But I did it anyhow, because it led to the ending that was prophesied about. <laughs> okay, the room's open. Hey, don't make me wait, guys. Jesus is coming soon. Don't wait. If you're a theist listening right now, hop on in. If, you, if there's like... 10% of you says, yeah, I should call in. 90% says, no, listen to that 10%. Heed that call. I'm in a very good, kind, compassionate mood. I sat through 12, 13 questions from this guy named Orchid. I mean, so patient. Although I had said, speed it up. Jeff, all the same people call in, but... Hey, my open theist friend. Hi. Are you Catholic uh, yet? I saw your uh, short video. Uh, um, and you and I think Deepak were talking about open theist, open yeah. theism. So, uh, so there is not a single open theist who mentioned that God is surprised when sin came into the world. And I, I, I think it's, there's not a, wait, hang on, hang on. There's not a single open theist who says what? God is surprised when sin came into the world. And you God, said God that. was, I, I, I seriously, I can't understand you. God is surprised? You surprised. said God is oh, surprised. surprised. Okay. Uh, you don't so, think open yeah, think, theists say that? Yeah, there's not a single open theist who said that. I think so. I think there is a, maybe you should be more accurate to, to describe how we open theists believe. How do you know, have you talked to all open theists? I have been, uh, I've been to open theist forum. I, I think not a single one uh, said it like that. Because I, I remember having an interview with a guy named Will Duffy years ago, who's an open theist. And I forget exactly all the questions I asked him, but I asked him about omniscience and if God knew that he would take of the fruit. And I think he told me, no, God did not know that with 100% I mean, certainty. Maybe he would say not, not as an outcome, but uh, as a possibility. And I, I know Will Duffy is my, uh, I, I mean, he is in, in the same forum that I am, and I, I know his position. Anyway. Uh, well, yeah, okay. anything's possible in the magical kingdom. But I asked him about... When, when someone says they know something, their confidence is at, usually at a high enough level to say that, you know, it's very, very likely that they're right and very unlikely that they're wrong. They say they know something. So when God says he knows evil take of the fruit, well, let me ask There's you. a possibility. I think he, if, that, that is his position. I, 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 I've seen, I've watched Will Duffy debate before. I, 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 I Get rid of the I, word possibility. Let me ask you directly. As an open theist, do you believe, let's put it, I want a number. Zero meaning that God has no idea. A hundred mean God knows for sure. Before Eve took of the fruit, did God know it? Give me a As number a of confidence. I mean, Give me a number. Sorry? Give me a number between zero and 100. No, about, I mean, can you be more precise, sorry? So if you say a hundred, you're saying God knew with 100% certainty that Eve would take of the fruit. If you say zero... God had no idea. 50-50. I mean, so God knows it as a possibility. Okay. 50-50 is a possibility to you. I mean, it, knowing as a possibility, it's, it's not, for example, God created, like somebody created a six-sided dice. So any from number one to six, you wouldn't be surprised. if, if Whatever the results come out of a dice store, you won't be surprised. But Okay, so... When God created the Garden of Eden, put Adam and Eve in it, it was basically a coin flip whether they would sin. But 
Yes, I mean, but the the possibilities uh, God, God, God sees the possibilities. Not, the outcome does not exist before the decisions are made. So it's not a surprise. I don't think surprise is are all word. is all of God's knowledge like that a coin flip? Like if did you believe God knows the day and the hour that you will die? Um. Okay. The, the, this is a good question. So I, I believe every uh, every believer got assigned security detail to them. So uh, so believer doesn't have this random factor, but for unbeliever, uh, it, it, random things can happen to them. So the, the, the different different groups have different. That's a great uh, answer, but not to the question I asked. The question. I, I'm, I'm, I'm being pre precise. So if me, I'm a believer. God has assigned security detail on me. When, when I die, it, God does decide it. But for you, since you are not a, since you are not a believer, no. But right now, right now, at this moment, because do you believe the future exists? Existence in a blueprint doesn't exist, but right. Uh, uh, so no. all we have is the present. Right now, does God know the day, the hour, the minute when you'll die? Unless, uh, lean yes, he's lean no. preserving me. I mean, no, no. Uh, I mean, I mean, he, 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 unless he has made a decision, I, I don't, I don't know what is God's plan for me. But it, it, since I'm a believer, he, he has security detail on me. Security detail? Is that what you said? It, it means that there are angels <laughs> protecting. Yeah, yeah. I'm being serious. That's it, war it, language. Huh? That's war it, language. It means that, uh, uh, unless God decide to take away my life, I, I, I will still continue to live. So that there are, uh, whether I live or die, it won't be random. But for you, it might be random. Do you think God does that for all believers? Like chooses their the date of their death? Or just you? All believers. Uh, all believers have security detail. Yes. So my death... Okay, let's change it to me because I'm not a believer. Do yeah. you believe God knows the day and the hour when I will die? The actual outcome, no. I mean, but not, nothing called God of of God. I mean, God knows a, a huge number of possibilities, but uh, the outcome, oh, no. So he doesn't know it because it doesn't exist. Can he predict it with like? Sorry? Can he predict it with eighty percent confidence? Ninety percent? God can determine to preserve your life. God, God has the power to to, 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 to to set a blueprint for you. But if he does not have a blueprint, then, I mean... But I don't have security detail in my life like you do. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. Uh, 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 short answer, uh, no. Uh, God doesn't know the actual outcome. Okay. Yeah, so God's sort of like me. Like what? God's sort of like me. Like, I don't know when you're going to die. Because I don't have security detail on you, so God's like me. Well, maybe it's like a commander. It's, it's like a, a team of war planners. You know, so so it, 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 God is very. You know, I feel like I need to. Um, oh, you know what we should do? Hang on a second. This is the game you need to buy. Have you ever... I have played that game when I was a child. I, yeah. I, I still remember I still remember 70% how it works. Because you like God to be a commander, you like power, you like security detail. This is the game for all Christians like Japheth. Buy Risk, the deluxe version. Oh man, you would get a, a dopamine rush from all the power and control and strategery. Uh, so somebody asked in the chat, and I'm just quickly re uh, reply to it. So how does prophecy works in open theism? So it got got to make a plan, and when the time comes, God causes it to happen. So sometimes God uh, intervenes in human decisions. So I, that, that's to answer the uh, question in the chat. And then when, when in that short video, when Deepak said that God has very little control in open theism, I, 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 and I think that's a an incorrect view. I think so. I just want to correct misinformation. I mean, well, no, but Deepak was sort of right because you believe in free will, right? 
Not absolutely. I mean, uh, 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 sometimes God will override humans. What percentage of time does God override? And what percentage of the time does he just let things go to free will? So if God has a prophecy, like uh, things... Uh, just in general, in life in general, my life, your life, if you were to... 100% of the time, he always takes control and, and manipulates the situation. 0% of the time, he never does. Where do you think God lies? I don't have a number on that because the, the, the Bible doesn't give a, an answer on that. I'm asking for your guess, your intuition. 45% of the time, perhaps. But for prophecy, God is very active in causing prophecies to happen. Hmm. So just under half the time, God intervenes. But if I if I am more prayerful, I think it, it could be more than fifty percent. So I, I, I believe if you know, so you can bump it up over fifty if you pray lots. Yeah, yes. So I mean, God doesn't lose control of creation in open theism. I think so. I, I want to correct this. Uh, this so if we had a if we had a hundred true Christians who prayed to God lots and they had kids with bone cancer or leukemia cancer. And they all prayed. You think over half the time those kids would be saved? Safe from disease or safe, it safe, safe, safe from right? death, physical death. Gotcha, didn't I, Javith? I, 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 this is a difficult <laughs> question because it, on on one hand, if God answers hundred percent of the time, there will be no faith already. Uh, I, I I hope there are no diseases, but I, I, there's no easy answer to. to, to I know, but you said that prayer can get you over fifty percent of the time. If that if no, wait, it, it, if, intervene, I didn't say. It, uh, uh, I mean, when God intervenes, doesn't mean that everything will be smooth. It just, just I mean. Well, if intervening means that that your prayers could do the opposite of what they they ask, then sometimes God, God has certain. For if you pray more. Uh, you, you're more aligned with God's will. You're more walking in the faith. And, and, but let me ask you a very direct question. Do you believe that it, parent, Christian parents, true Christian parents, if they pray to God that their kids will be healed of terminal cancer, that it's more likely than not that that will happen? Yes, because uh, Jesus said, if you pray to the Father, uh, if you pray for a feast, he won't give you a snake. So, okay, I mean, let's uh, say we ran that experiment and tested that. And it turned out that we took thousands of cr true Christian parents that you say are true Christians, and they all prayed to God that their children will be healed, meaning they won't die in the next decade or so, of this terminal cancer where the doctors all say imminent death in the next few months or weeks they're going to die. We run the experiment, and let's say it turns out that 99% of those kids die. What would you say to that test result? Would you admit that you're wrong? There are too many variables here. For, for example, God could decide that this 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 couple uh, is. No. Would you admit that you're wrong? That when people pray to God, that God will intervene to save. I believe what the New Testament said. I mean, Jesus said, "If you pray, I mean." Okay, you... but that New Testament verse, if we test it using this test I proposed. Wouldn't that show that that New Testament verse is wrong? So you you have an assumption that God God is like a vending machine instead of a thinking agent. Like us. you're the guy who brought up you can pray to God and increase. You, you can bump up the probability, but even if you go to casino, higher probability you still you have you played craps. Yeah. So. Just because the odd of six, seven, eight is more, that doesn't mean you you can get a four or a ten. Sometimes, I mean, I mean, things can happen. Even even when the yeah, but the test I proposed was okay. Read that verse you mentioned. What verse was it? Whatever you pray. I, I don't name. remember. Okay, okay. So Jesus was saying, if you pray to the Father to ask for a fish, He won't give you a snake. I mean, so so I mean, prayer does help, uh, but to, to okay. what extent? Prayer I, does help what? To do what? What does prayer help for? To improve the odd of, of, of getting God, God's favor. I, it's, it's not 100%. I, I've never claimed it's 100%. Okay. But you, so my question is, if we took a thousand true Christian parents who prayed for their kids with terminal cancer, and, and then, so they pray to God, Lord, 
I pray that my child will not die and that they will get better. And if 99% of those children die, would you say that verse has now been falsified? Uh, so a true Christian and a test, I, I, I don't know. I, I, you, you have to come up. There is, I, I know that there is no such test so far because I, I, I do read the, about the charismatic, the, the people who claim, the Christian group who, who are very active in seeking God's healing is the charismatic. And I read a lot about how they operate. I, I don't think there is such, I'm sure there is no, there is no such experiment yet, but the experiment that has been done so far is about when you pray, you, you feel calmer. That has been proven. I want to try and bring and up that like verse. High, higher level of happiness. I mean, but the... Uh, I think curing sickness itself, I, I don't think it has been tested. I love the verse you brought up. Because it's in Luke eleven eleven. I think this is the verse. And it has eleven eleven in it. And I started this live stream at eleven eleven my time. So this is this is providence. What we're talking about now, God uh, has foreseen. Can you see that? I'll make it. Yes. Up. Let's let's work together here to test this verse to see whether or not it's true. Because you you value truth, right? Yeah. You care if whether things are true or not. So let's uh, figure out what test we could use to see if this is true. Oh, hang on. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So what do you think this verse means, this passage? Does this only apply to asking for the Holy Spirit? Okay, and, and I, I remember, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe not using the verse correctly but so there's another verse that says you have not because you ask not that is a verse in john um uh, so I, I, okay what's the implication so, of that so the the picture that i get is uh, i mean i mean it it encourages just a prayerful life right? because it is beneficial so it, it it's not an outlandish uh position i take from from, from those two verses when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend on what you get on your pleasures. Uh, that's not the verse. But yeah. Have not, you ask not, right, right. But isn't the implication there that if you do ask, you will get? You have not because you ask not. Uh, I, okay. I, I don't operate this. If you ask, 100% you get. I mean, I, I, I never make that uh, claim. So, well, here's a good one. Let's let's use this verse. Let's test this verse. This is John fifteen seven. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. What do you think that means? I yeah I, yeah, I know some. Charismatic use it to the extreme. That's it's one hundred percent. I think I I believe the New Testament is like a legal book. So just just because a condition is not stated in in this passage, I think uh, you, you can find the condition in other passages. You must have great faith. I, uh, but do you uh, believe you abide in Christ? Sorry. Do you abide in Christ? Uh, I'm trying. I mean, but but yes. I mean, yeah, yes. I mean, okay. I'm, 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 does I'm Christ, not a Christian. Does Christ's words abide in you? I'm trying. You're yeah, trying. I mean, I mean, yes. I mean, but, but the lean yes, right? Lean yes for both. I mean, I'm lean yes. I'm not claiming to be a sinless. Okay, so you lean yes this in saying that Christ abides in you and his words abide in you and you abide in him and then it says here ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you what do you wish for Japheth? right right now okay what i'm what i'm gonna 
say next is may not be very spiritual, but right now I'm prioritizing success in, in my uh, period of life. Okay, so you're asking God for success in your life? Yes, at, at, at a spirit, yes. And how do you define success? How would you know when you're successful or not successful? Yeah, it's, I told you, it's not, it's, it's not a spiritual goal for, at the moment. It's, it's just uh, going to get my startup up and running and, and, and yeah, and be productive. Yeah. What about people you love who are sick? Do you have any people who are sick, like really sick? That you know i pray for them i mean if, if there, are, there are reports that come to me I, I, I pray for them and do you think it works your prayers to me okay for, for, for me here, here's the uh the, the part to me to me uh, i'm just following order so whatever the result is i mean i'm not god so let god decide Okay, but the but the you're just following orders. But the order is here that ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. The commander God has to decide whether, whether he grants it. I, I, that's not in my power. But the my commander power. in chief has told you, the private, uh, the private soldier, that ask whatever you want, it'll be given if you abide in me and I abide in you. Which you, I asked you those questions. You said yes. So just ask. Yeah, I, I, I've been asking. I, I have my requests and I, I'm, I'm Okay, so up. you should make a list of all your requests and then all the outcomes and then uh, test it. Maybe this verse is false. Would you want to know if it's, it's false, if it is false? Would you want to know that? Uh, okay, I mean... Because uh, interaction between thinking agent, uh, uh, you, there are other kind of tests. For example, I, I'm sure you you could have spoke, spoken to your child. If you you ask what you want, I will give it to you in in such a manner. You don't you don't, you don't put it in such a such a legal okay correction on legal bit so, such. What if I told you that yeah. um, whenever you give me a hundred bucks. Within one month, I'll give you one hundred and ten dollars, ten percent return in one month. If I, you are my friend, uh, uh, de depends. I have to know the context. Is like, what, what are you trying to? No, uh, let's say, let's say I said that whenever you give me hundred bucks, I'll give you a ten percent return in one month. How would you test that claim? I'm willing, I have to be willing to take the risk for losing $100 and put my $100 in you. Right. And, and, and yeah. see what, what happened after one month. So if, let's say you do it in the first month and I give you 110 back, you do it the second month, I give you 110 back, but the third month I don't. In fact, I give you nothing back. So overall you've lost money. Yeah. So would you say that that claim I made is false? That whenever you give me $100, I'll give you 110 back? That is now a false claim, right? Because I said whenever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if for you, it's a false claim, but yeah, I mean, it's very yeah, easy yeah. to test that, right? Yeah, isn't it very easy to test John fifteen eleven or seven? Can't we test it the same way without excuses and saying, "Well, oh, but 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 but"? No, it's a very simple claim, very simple test. Okay. Uh so the so and one one, one one more point that you made in, in that field I want to address. So it, so uh, you said if a being has desires, he's not omnipotent. What what what, what would you? Uh, the, 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 oh, you the, okay. We're done with that. Okay. Well, this will be the last thing. You you want to get back to that uh, discussion I had with Deepak. Yeah, I mean, that, 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 I, I told you, I, I called in for that. Okay, okay. Um, I don't think I ever said that God wouldn't have desires, but I'm saying that uh, if he has needs, then that takes away from omnipotence, like if he needs something. Okay, wait, 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 let, let's really define need. Need as in, okay, if you are right, if God, God needs something to, to survive, uh, uh, then, I mean, then I would agree that that would take away from omnipotence. But let's say if you... If God desires interaction, you will consider that as a need. 
not necessarily, but he, my position is that if God desires interaction, given that that interaction will lead to a conflicting desire, then he doesn't need that interaction and he wouldn't create it. Does that make sense? To have interaction is better than no interaction for a thinking agent. Yeah. How about for God? God is a thinking agent too. He is, is uh, yeah. Okay. That's so, why he so, this belief. so you're saying that where God is before creation is not, it could be better. I believe God created creation because uh, it improves. His, uh, it, it, so if there are creatures that, that are interaction for him, if there, if God, if God does not create anything, God will be experiencing solipsism. Oh boy, oy vey. I, I asked you a simple question here. Is God better by creating? What do you mean better? Because it's so it's it's, it's a very you broad, said I mean, better in a, a thinking better for his experience. Yes, you said a thinking agent or something like that uh, is better off with uh, communication or something, right? You said that interaction. Okay, I didn't interaction. use the word communication, but yeah, interaction. Right. So God is better off with interaction. Because that is what the feature of a thinking agent. Right. That, that means he's not, not as better off without it. He's less than without interaction. That's what you're saying. That's what you're implying. If he's better with interaction, he's worse without it. And that is what a thinking agent is. Yeah, I stand by it. Okay, so what you're saying is that the all-loving, all-perfect, all-powerful God is better by creating. I reject classical theism. The, the, the perfect being is static. I, I reject statistics. statistics. Why, why are we... Just answer the question. Is he better by creating? Is he more perfect? I, I reject the, the, the usage of the perfect as what the Greek philosophy uses. It. It, a perfect being has to be static. I, I reject that. Uh, the, the, so the, God's not perfect. God is complete. When the Bible says God is perfect, means God is complete. Okay. Is okay. God more complete after creation? So when, when, when the Bible says God is complete, no, 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 no. When, when God says, oh. the Bible says God is complete, God completes his objective. God completes uh, whatever he sets out to do. And is God more complete with interaction? For a thinking age. <sighs> this is the real Why problem of evil, to, Jeff, and you're it, wrestling it with it. Because, sorry, it. Is God more complete with interaction? It improves his experience. I mean, uh, uh, with interaction, God improves his experience. It can, improves can his experience. Correct. So without that, his experience is not as good. Sure. So God before creation, his experiences were not as good as they could be. See the problem here? So it's a thinking agent. So yeah, God is a thinking agent. I mean, what, what is the matter with it? See, yeah, but what you're saying God. here is though, and this is what me and Deepak were getting at, that there's something missing. It's like creation is what makes God complete. It improves. I didn't use such a term. Okay, I, I didn't use such a more complete. I say improve. Uh, use any words you want. You're basically saying there's some type of deficit in God that is overcome by creating. And that is an out to the problem of evil that you're, you're choosing here. It's a thinking agent. So, so this is what the thinking, I mean, the alternative is a stone. Stone that does, doesn't, doesn't think, that doesn't interact. So that, that, that you only have two alternative here, e, e, either the the foundation of reality is a thinking agent or is a, a non living object. So so what what is what's the, what's so bad? You understand why I'm where I'm dry? No, I you you have to choose that out. I don't think you have a choice. Yeah, God is a thinking agent. I mean, what what what, what, what no no why? you you're choosing the out of that God is less than without creation. That's fine. You can choose that no, no, out. No, no, without I, interaction. I say, I, say, I say interaction. Okay, I say interaction. Okay, that's... Uh, we're done, Jeff. You, you, you don't continue this? No, I think we're done.
But if you can address this. I think this is. I want. I want to complete this. Maybe a few more minutes. I'll give you one more minute. You can have the last word. No, no. I'm asked why. Why is it? Why do you have to think it in terms of deficit? Well, I'm using that language because I know purposely it will cause cognitive dissonance in you. But whenever I use any word I use, you will try to change a word um, because you're seeing a problem here. You're seeing that that. If you say that more complete, likes interaction, whatever you, words you use, you're admitting that God before creation was not all that. That there was some thing here, and then and then after creation it went up. You can okay. use, so, use what, what, that's fine. That's fine. You can you choose that out, but a lot of Christians have a problem with that because. When you think of an of a God who's all complete like you do, all loving, all powerful, and you view him as a commander who's down here that after he gets his crew, now he's up here? No, he's a true old. powerful commander is up here whether he creates or not. Nothing but changes. I don't understand. Okay, so, so okay. Is that, how does it affect omnipotence at all? So, yes, God in, in, in experience improved, but how does it I had enough. Because now we're just playing word games. Who's going to be my last guest? The aptitude and the competence of a crisp packet in a high wind. <laughs> infinity plus versus infinity plus one doesn't mean that infinity has a deficit, Pine Creek. Infinity is not a number. That's a category error. Is infinity a number that you can add things to? What was this? Eli, where's your shirt? Uh, you're muted. I can't hear you. There you go. Hello? Yeah. Okay. Why, why are you not uh, wearing a shirt? Because it's my house. No, 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 no. It's not your house. You are, okay, you're I'll, in I'll my get, house. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll be right back. Put your shirt All right, on. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it. Okay. Come on, we got to have decency. You know how many Christian women you're going to cause to stumble? There's married Christian women watching, and they're going to see you. And they're going to lust. And I don't want any lusting in my administration. No, you make a good point. Are you Christian, Muslim, Jew? We talked before, remember? No. You don't remember? No. Oh, this was a little while ago. But yeah. I've, had, I've cheated on you. I've had many guests since then. Anyways, um, no, I'm... I'm uh, I guess I'm going to end up being a lifelong seeker. Oh, what were you before? A short-term seeker? <laughs> yeah, I, I guess I guess I thought I was going to get my answer at some point, but I don't know now. What happened? What changed? I mean, I still go to church. Um, I think we talked about it like it was it was it's all just carrots and sticks for me. It's just like you know, with Islam it's like you're burning in hellfire and with Christianity you're burning in hellfire. So that's like the two that I'm like looking into, I guess you could say. But uh, remind me, were you a Christian or a Muslim? No, no, no. not at all. No. What do you I was always a theist. I was always a theist. Oh, okay. Just a general, general yeah. theist. Okay. I think open theism, uh, you were talking with that last guy. Uh, it does make a lot of sense. But it's like, I don't know. I, I agree with you. The real problem of evil is, is like, why would God create anything? And like, it does take away from him if he has to create. And I guess for like a Christian, that'd be the best way to get around it is like, it's just in his nature to create. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of Christians take that out and just say that that's, I, I would, 
phrase it differently other than saying it's in his nature to create, I would say uh, God has no free will. And that bothers them. That's why I say it that way. Well, it's kind of like you could replace it with anything else. Like, can God choose whether he's evil? Like, that still limits him, right? If well, choose... he, some Christians disagree on that question. They say God could choose to do evil, but uh, he doesn't. But I thought that the hierarchy of God's properties was always like holiness is at the very top. Yeah, yeah. Most Christians would say, yeah, no, God cannot go against his nature. Yeah, I agree. So you could say yeah. that with creating, right? God can't go against his nature. So he is by nature not om omnipotent in that way, that he can't control whether he does good or evil. But then it's really hard for a Christian to admit that God could have chosen not to create. Like it's hard for them to swallow that pill. Like to say that he, like I understand what you're saying, it's part of his nature, but when you, if a guy like me were to ask, so could God have chosen not to create anything? They have to answer no to that question. And, yeah. it, and that's hard for them to do. Yeah, and then it's weird because then like, wouldn't it make more sense if God did exist for there not, not to be anything other than God? Yeah, if, if God doesn't want people to perish and he creates knowing that some will, that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, this is this is kind of what's like, this is the mental roadblock I have to go through if I want to become like some kind of the like some kind of like Christian or Muslim, you know? Well, but why do you care? Like, is it just because you're fearful of death and hell? Yeah, oh. that's it. That's it. And we did we go through this before? Like, why do you even think hell's a, a thing? I can't remember, honestly. We we talked for like I think we talked last time for like an hour, but I, I didn't really think things through. I didn't have much thoughtful to say. What if I told you that when you die, you immediately go to a room that's pink and you eat uh pink donuts with pink icing for the rest of your life? Eternal life. Eternal life. What would be your first question to me? I why why pink donuts? Because the book says so. Okay, well, see, here's the thing. There is some kind of, like, consistency with, like, the two books. They're saying, like, and it's not just, like, Western, like... Um, I got two books, too, that say that you're going to eat pink donuts. Right, right? but I, I guess, okay, would you say that they are inherently from, like, different sources? No, they're, they're kind of related. So I got this one source so think, that came okay. after another source, and they both yeah. say that when you die, you're going to go in a pink room and eat pink donuts. Are you worried about eating pink donuts for eternal life? Even a little not, bit? Not particular. Well, maybe a little bit, you know, because you've made the claim. And I, I t I've talked with people. Uh, Just by me this. making the claim gets you yeah. to start to worry? I mean, no, not like worry like I'm having like mental angst, but like it's just like it's possible. You know? why, why aren't you like me and just say, Doug, if if you're right and some books say this, that's just so stupid. I, who cares? Like, or I that's option one. Or another well, is option, there, another okay. option is you could say yeah. is, well, why should I even believe this in the first place? Who cares if these two books say this? Like, those are other things you could ask. Is there a way to get out of eating pink donuts? Uh, yeah. If you go to Tim Hortons every day for the rest of your life, when you die, you will not eat pink donuts. What will, what's the alternative? You'll have the best coffee ever for eternal life. <laughs> These are two very bad situations. <laughs> or whatever you want. But, yeah. it, but at, at some point, I think humans have to ask, why do I think any of this is true to begin with? And once they delve into it, it's like, these are humans making up stuff. I don't know. I find, like... You can't the falsify the how, afterlife. I mean, it's just... Well, like, okay, what do you, what do you think about, like, near-death experiences and stuff like that? I think they're experiences that they've had while their brain still has brain activity. And oftentimes, their near-death experiences comport to their real-life experiences. So... An atheist will experience one thing, a Muslim another, a Christian another, a Jew another, and it's no surprise that it comports to what's already in their brain. 
maybe i don't know i with the i think i find some of that stuff compelling just because you know talk about like you know seeing the time and like okay. you know, they know I... what doctors they they know what doctors no i i get what you could say to that you could say it like the subconscious is like really powerful you know you could be like, oh, yeah, I know what time it is. No, no, like, no, no, no. I, I wasn't going to say that. I, would, I no. agree with you. That is very powerful evidence, but I believe we don't have that. I think a lot of these stories that you hear guys like Habermas spew out of their mouth like vomit are um, stories, legends that have developed over time. And when you actually press them for details and or documents or anything to support their claims, it's like... Well, it's always decades later, a uh, long ago, so mm. and so, and you never get to the primary source of who experienced it. Like that one lady who saw the the shape of the instrument tool. Like I've searched and scoured the internet for years. I've heard of this, and I you don't hear her coming out and saying her side of the story. These are things that Christians who feel stupid about what they believe use to feel not so stupid. But here's, well, here's how we can make yeah. it better. Here's where I would be on the side of consciousness is immaterial or whatever that means, is we have reproducible results where we kill people, bring them back to life, and then we interview them for the time. They could kill people for a full week and a thousand people, bring them back to life a week later. And I bet you someday we will have that technology. Well, maybe. And I don't I, no, I, I honestly don't think so. Well, who it knows? Would be the same. I don't think it would be the same person because I. It, do you think? Okay, I heard this thing is like you don't have to be a theist or believe in a higher power necessarily to think that consciousness is like on another level of existence. True. Do you are you under the belief that like we don't have any consciousness separate from like? what our brain is comprised of right i'd lean naturalist okay yeah well, i don't i don't know about that but i'll I, change I, my I, mind in a heartbeat once you we could have rep reproduce the results like i'm talking about yeah yeah i don't know that's not that's not really like on the forefront of my mind um i i'm i find it very intuitive that like something above this does exist what i did want to talk about though was like the conception of hell not only in like um islam and christianity but also in like some forms of like buddhism like do you think that just is just a coincidence or is it like no it's not a coincidence okay what why is that because humans humans and their cultures talk to each other is that not a significant enough distance no like in terms of geography, no? Okay. Well, I don't know much about geography. So Judaism, like... Christianity, and even Hinduism, they're actually pretty close to each other if you look at a map. Mm. The distance between India and uh, Israel, Egypt, yeah, Italy, yeah. Eh, we're talking about a very small fraction of a planet. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. And you've got I... business people who go from place to place, share ideas. Sure. Yeah. 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 It, it does make sense, but it's, I don't know. I still find it very, very like scary because like, maybe it's just all the detail they put into it. Like it's all, it's, it's very congruent with each other. Like, do you watch horror, horror movies? No, I don't. Why? Because I don't find joy in, in that. I don't watch movies in general, but but would you seriously get scared if you watched a movie where demons grab people and drag them across the floor or um demons haunt people or like does that really bother you no but you know what would bother me is if those demons drag them to hell for eternity because like that's inherently the scariest thing that could happen to you because you know when i was a christian some of those movies really did impact me in a negative way like I really yeah. did get fearful. Now as an atheist, I enjoy them and I laugh at them and I, I talk, how did they, how did the makeup artists do that? Like, these are the questions I tell, I ask myself, like, and it just, it's amazing to me how so many people still in the year 2022 
believe in ghosts and goblins and demons and angels and it's unbelievable to me really i don't know i think i i find that stuff believable like you see some of the evil that happens in the world and it's like if that's not demons i don't know what is when a know? chimpanzee tears apart another chimpanzee is that a demon no that's just when a human instinct. tears apart another human is that a demon no but like is it's out of necessity, right? And some people just inflict suffering for the sake of inflicting suffering. Like, I don't know what else. Like, I can't wrap my brain around that, you know? That has to be just pure evil. And I don't think that a human okay, alone Okay, if a is chimp capable. kills another chimp for no apparent reason other than to inflict harm on that other chimp. But does that even happen? Would you say that's evil? Well, okay, well, first off, does it even happen? Let's say in this thought experiment it does. I, okay. I think it does in real life, too, but even a if chimp? it doesn't, let's say it does. Would you call that evil? And on a higher dimension plane, some type of evil? Yeah, I mean, or... You would? I, I don't know if it... Are you trying to make the argument that, like, because a chimp is not fully conscious, as conscious as we are, that it's not evil because it has no conception of evil. All I'm saying is we are chimps. We are, oh, like, I just, I, I we are like chimps. We might be like them, but I don't know. We don't are think like we bonobos. Are. <laughs> we are like orangutans. Maybe maybe that's you. And so maybe that's your ancestry. When you, but... <laughs> Eli, when you say things like when I see what people do to each other is like on a higher plane of evil. That's yeah. the first thing that popped my mind. You see this in the animal kingdom all the time with higher primates. And we don't use words like evil for them. Well, maybe sometimes we do, but not on this higher plane that you're talking about, like some, you know, decreed omnipotent being saying this is good, this is evil. No, we don't talk like that with animals, but we are animals. You are an animal. A very fine one. We saw you with your shirt off, but you're still like I look. There's gorillas with better bodies than you. Oh yeah, that's what I aspire. That's the physique I yeah. aspire to. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, I think that we are definitely different than those chimps. Like, well, we are. Like, no, but like in a different way, you know. Like, we're not we're not just another animal. Like, we we talk like. It's just so intuitive that there's something special about us, you know? And you could say every species feels that way, but I, I really don't think so. <laughs> I don't care how buff you are. You're never going to match this gorilla. It is true. It's so true. Like this gorilla could tear you apart for no reason. It yeah. Would, you... And I don't think I would use the word evil. It's just unfortunate <laughs> no like i mean okay if you had the choice to step on an ant or not would you step on the ant uh yeah i think that, I, I think i would yeah why you see that 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 to me is like well, okay but it, if you're now going to ask the why question then i can ask well what's the, the circumstance but most of the time i see an ant most of the times i see an ant it's actually around my house so i don't want ants in my house Okay, okay. Say you're like on the other side of the planet. It, it makes no difference whether you step on this ant or not. Do you step on the ant? Um, so I'm asked the question, like, what's the other part of the planet? I'm, I don't I'm, understand I'm, the question. No, I'm just asking, like, would you inflict would you inflict unnecessary harm onto something, even if it is lesser than you, even if you don't, you don't, you don't understand the consequences personally, right? Yeah. Like, okay, you're saying the ants on the other side of the world and it's not impacting me at all. Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. or any other human. No, the answer is no. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I, I would say that if you if you say yes to that and it's just, like, there's no reason for it, I would say that that's a degree of evil. And people do a lot worse things than step on ants for no reason. What, what makes you think they don't do it for a reason? I'm so, okay. Do you think that like all of the time it's for a reason? Like somebody, somebody has a choice of like choosing whether it's just. Well, I lean determinist, so I think like if someone does harm to another person, what I, when I when you ask is there a reason, 
I'm saying that there's conditions before their action that caused them to lead up to that action. So let's say a kid, uh, like think of Jeffrey Dahmer. Like he had um, a pretty rough mother, pretty rough childhood, grows up. Uh, they, he actually, I think, I think he asked to have his brain analyzed, but then the judge, I think, uh, said, no, he's cremated right away. But he could have some type of brain um, chemical imbalance or something, maybe even a tumor, who knows. But if, if it was found out that Jeffrey Dahmer had a tumor in his head, which caused certain parts of his like, sympathy, empathy to be shut down, isn't that a reason why he did what he did? Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah. So you're saying that most of the stuff I would call evil, you can just attribute to indifference. No, no. I, I'm saying you can use that word, but, um, but that doesn't imply that there's something more beyond this universe, tangible universe. Like I use the word evil all the time, but yeah. uh, in no way do I imply that there's a <laughs> Satan or God or demons or angels. Yeah. I don't know. I guess inherently when you, when you don't believe in the supernatural, you don't really think about it in those terms. Cause like I could totally see, like it makes sense to me why or like how you could look at things so natural like some from such a naturalistic perspective because it, it it all makes sense like once you have matter it all makes sense but this for me the reason why i believe in god is because like most of it is just intuitively i don't think that matter would exist without something to put it there why do you think that it okay let me let me ask it like this. Do you think God could exist without some other God putting God there? Well, God is the creator. So like Right, but he exists he without being put there, right? Yeah. Why couldn't the cosmos be like that? Why couldn't the cosmos be outside of time? Yeah, well definitely. That's easy. I don't why, know. Why couldn't the cosmos exist? prior to our time in our universe right now well outside, what would you outside say outside of it yeah well what would you say happened before the big bang then are, are you like a multiverse theory person well, no, i don't know and i don't care but the interesting question is um why can't the universe the cosmos not our universe but everything that existed even prior to the big bang why can't it be eternal what's stopping it and it's outside our time. It's outside our space. All the exact wording that theists want to use to describe their creator, God, I can say this of the cosmos. And then they say, well, you're just calling the cosmos God. Well, okay, sure, fine. But it's not a bodiless mind that's omnipotent, omniscient, and all these crazy things. It's a category of existence that we're familiar with, i.e. matter, quantum fluctuations, whatever you want to call it. Uh, mm. To me, it's more reasonable to think that than to start introducing this things, these things we can't even define. Like, what is spiritual? What is immaterial? What is soul? What is spirit? Like, get theists to define those words without using an i eh or a not in front of it, and they struggle. Well, okay. So, why do you not think that there's any like other dimensions to this reality, like any other layers to it? There could be, but probably, yeah. So probably what you see is what you get. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's interesting because it's like, if the okay, do you believe in aliens? No, but I hope they're there. It'd be fun. Okay, so have actually, you, actually, aliens that have visited us, no, but aliens that ex might exist uh, somewhere else, I actually lean yes on that. Okay, yeah. Well, I, I would say that most people do, unless you're like super religious or something yeah um just because like the sheer probability right you have all this space right the conditions for a planet like earth are become like higher and higher so why 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 would a different plane to reality like different dimensions be any different than that if you have an infinite universe why couldn't you have multiple dimensions to that universe sure you could and like, I guess that's what you could call the supernatural 
in a way. Well, but nobody that I talk to and that you talk to who calls themselves a theist talks that way. Right. They don't I, define I don't know. God as some different dimensional universe. Like they, they view it as No, I'm not I'm not saying I'm not saying even God, but like if, if you want to talk about like demons and angels, maybe they're just like aliens from another dimension, you know? But again again, but most theists don't talk that way. Most Christians don't view well, actually, the baseline is that they are demons disguised as aliens. Yeah. 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 Anyhow. Well, not both. Yeah. Anyhow. Eli, <laughs> uh, so are you a theist or an agnostic? I, I am definitely. Well, I guess no one can know for sure, but I lean towards theist. So uh, 100% is a mindless a bodiless mind exists i.e god with some attributes you choose whatever you want and zero is there is none mindless bodiless mind yeah where do you lean mm, 99.9 oh you made it so i was expecting like 62 or something but 99.9, .9, you're not even close to agnostic. Yeah, no, I, I, I never claimed it. I just uh, well, you came on. No one... You saying you're you said something about being agnostic? No, no, I, I agnostic in terms of like which religion is right. But oh. I, I know, I know that I'm a theist. Like obviously, okay. no one can know for a hundred. You, you can't know for a hundred percent that there's no God, right? Okay, so you're at 99.9, .9, and the reason why you're a theist is because. Uh, something has to put the universe in here. No, I think I think you can make a, a an argument for time being. Like, there's so many things you could say to get around it. Okay, right? when I ask why do you believe, why are you 99 percent confident that God exists? What's the first thing that pops in your head? Nothing's popping. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking about the argument uh, um, from morality as well. Like, that's is that's that the first second. thing that popped in your head? Yeah, it well, I mean, the first thing that pops into my head is just like my intuition says is that like if if there's matter around us, something has to create it. And maybe that's not the smartest reasoning, but I think the second best thing would be like the argument from morality. Okay, let's take morality. Why do you think morality has anything to do with a god? Because I def I personally define morality as whatever God says right, is right or wrong. Okay, now let me see if I'm understanding you right. You're ninety nine percent confident God exists because of morality, and you define morality as something that God gives. Yeah. So, like, you don't see do a problem you, there. No, I don't. Round Actually, around we go. No, because here's the thing: if you're an atheist, right, you don't, you can't believe in morality because everybody's experience is subjective. Okay. Now, if I say I'm an atheist. And you ask me, well, Doug, what's the first thing that pops in your head? And I say morality. And you say, well, well how does morality have to do with the atheism? Because I say that um, there is no morality. And if a God existed, there would be morality. But there is no morality. But I define morality as, as not having anything to do with God. What would you say to me? You'd say, that's so you, so, crazy. So you're, talk? So you're just, <laughs> wait, I'm, I'm trying to see if I understand what you're saying. What I'm you're doing saying... the opposite of what you did. Okay. So you're saying that like whatever God says, the opposite. I'm that. defining morality as having nothing to do with God, mm -hmm. and that's why I'm an atheist. Because when I look at the morality of us around the world, and I say, "Oh, look at that morality," that proves that there's no God, because that's the way I've defined morality, and that's what you did. Okay. 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 Maybe, maybe I, I didn't articulate myself properly then. Okay. Let me put it. Okay. This let's way. start again. You're 99% okay. confident there's a God. Why do you believe there's a God? What's the first thing that pops in your head? Okay. Some things are right, right? There's things that are right and there's things that are wrong, right? And just from a practical perspective, right? You need, you need something to differentiate what's wrong from what's right. And the only thing that can do that with a hundred percent accuracy is God. Okay, why do you believe the only thing that can do that with 100% accuracy is God? Because God is the only entity that is omniscient and omnipotent and inherently is the one that's created the universe. See, you're basically saying the same thing you said prior. You're having the circular argument. You're No, but I'm saying morality could exist outside of God. 
but God is just what tells you what morality is. Before I didn't phrase it right, so it was like I was saying. Okay, how do you know God tells God. you what morality is? How do I know that God tells me what morality is? Yeah, you saying you know God exists because God tells you what morality is, right? I'm not saying He tells anyone. I'm saying that if somebody does know, right? Do you the, know the, what, what's good and what's bad? What's moral? What's not? No, only God knows. How do you know God knows? Because God is omniscient. How do you know God's omniscient? How do you know God, this God exists? That's the question. This is, this is true. This is, it, it does come back to this. So I'll ask you again. You're 99% yeah. confident God is real, exists. Why? Why do you believe that? Why are you so that's confident? A, that's a good question. But honestly, that's not really what I'm worried about. I'm worried about how to, how to please him, how to make him happy. That's what I'm worried about. Okay, I, I understand that's what you're worried about, but yeah. you, all those worries would go away if you didn't believe God existed, right? So let's, let's work on this together. Maybe you're worrying for nothing. <laughs> Maybe, I don't okay, know. Okay, so let me ask you again. You said you're 99% confident God exists, yeah. and I'm asking you, why are you so confident? What's the first thing that pops in your head? Maybe it's a personal thing. If I if if God didn't exist, then I would just be a bad person. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. If God didn't exist, you'd be a bad person. Yeah, because it's like I don't know. I feel like my whole my whole perspective on everything would change. But and there's, then you There's bad people in the world today, right? Yeah. And you yeah, still believe God exists. So you becoming a bad person. No, no I'm I'm saying I'm saying like I'm I'm making I'm making an argument from okay. your perspective. I see. Like I I cannot I cannot because practically speaking, my belief in God is keeping me like sane and like a good person. Okay, or, let's let's like not a good person, but like not a bad person. Okay, I got you now. I got you now. Let's do this thought experiment. Let's say I have a crystal ball, and the crystal ball says that starting tomorrow, yeah you're going to become an atheist tonight something's going to happen to you tomorrow morning you're going to wake up an atheist mm -hmm. and this crystal ball also says that your life will not change meaning you're not going to become this bad person you worry about would your confidence that god exists would drop would it drop You're at 99%. Would it drop at all if if it's true that you would not become this bad person you're worried about if you became an atheist? I I don't I don't even like this question, not because like I I don't want to answer it, but just because I don't think it would ever happen. Like there's nothing that you could say to make someone like a complete atheist. And if you're my perspective is that if you're 99.9% .9 sure that there is no god, right? you still should act as if there is a God because in that 0.1% chance that he does exist, you know, you still want to act like he exists because he might hurt you if you do something bad. Well, you could come at it from that fear perspective or just out of that love perspective. Like you've created me and I want to show that I appreciate this gift of life. You know, by living in a way that pleases you. You know, you do realize that most people in jail believe in God, right? Sure. Okay. And in fact, I'd go further. Most murderers and rapists believe a God exists. And in fact, they, there's murderers and rapists out there who are probably would say they're ninety nine percent confident that God exists, just like you. Seems like God existing doesn't make a dent in their actions. That's a good point. That's a very good point. So yeah. let's try this one more time. You're 99% okay. confident God exists. All Why? Right. All right. Because I don't think that there's any way to prove with 100% certainty that he doesn't exist, but there is a way to prove to an individual that he, or that he doesn't exist. But there is a way to prove to an individual that he does exist. Okay, but we're talking about you now. So you're the individual. Has God proven to okay. you that he exists? And if so, no, what? no. But okay, here let me let me put it this way. 
so like you can can if okay let's say god does exist okay Mm -hmm. if if somebody is like questioning whether or not he exists let's say they're an atheist right or not questioning but like an atheist right god can always come to that person and reveal himself right Mm -hmm. okay but on the flip side right let's let's say that you have um that same person and no god exists Mm -hmm. right god can never come and reveal to that person right so like it's just it just follows that like i forget but do do you think that some people on the planet believe that god has revealed himself to them but that god doesn't exist and a different god exists well that's 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 what i'm saying like i i don't know like some of them could be lying some of them could be be telling the truth mistaken yeah could be mistaken but like my my point is that like you can always have that knowledge revealed to you right that God exists. Okay, why not believe God doesn't exist until that knowledge is revealed to you? Well, I, I guess I guess it really comes down to the fact that this is my default. Maybe it's because of the way ah, I was raised. Okay, why? Yeah, why is it your default? I don't know. I, I guess we're all just molecules bumping into each other. And but like, you were I, you were about to say it because of the way you were raised, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, I guess I guess you could say that that's my default, but it's like. I would rather have that default than the other. Why? Right? Because I think that if you assume that God exists, it it leaves more doors open. Like Like, what? Like you can... Like what I was talking about. Like you can always have God like proven to exist, but you can't always... Like, there's no way to know for sure that God can't exist, but there is a way to know for sure that he does Yeah, I understand exist. that. And the thing is, like, even, let's say I was to get terminal, let's, let's make it more personal. Let's say my one of my children gets terminal terminal cancer tomorrow. Yeah. And I hear what you're saying. You say, okay, if I say, if I believe, if I'm 99% confident that no gods exist, and there's no one to pray to to help my kid, right? But you're saying if this God does exist, then at least I can pray to this God and maybe he will heal my kid. Yeah. So, like, in other words, you can, it's possible, right? Like, it's logically possible to be 100% certain, right, of, of a God's existence. But it's logically impossible to be 100% certain of God's inexistence or non-existence. No, I don't agree with that. But uh, my, well, my, because, point, because, my point was that yeah. this God can still reveal himself to me even if I don't believe in him. Like it, it's in his, the ball's in his court, not mine. Right, like, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why, I, should that's the why default I'm... position be that no gods exist until they demonstrate themselves to, to you? I think your default position is backwards. Is it? Because like, okay, if, Okay, let me ask it this way. What's what's the harm in believing that a god exists? Well, that's a completely different question. Right. But, but it, it goes there back is to harm. the default. It goes back to the default. Doesn't it? Well, let's uh, think of it this way. Like there's a lot of harm that could come into believing god exists. Um throwing homosexuals off a roof building. Because yeah. God thinks Homosexuality is an abomination. And a person believes that by throwing the homosexual person off the top of a roof, that they're doing the will of God. Okay, how about this? What what if I were to say that, like, the biggest consequence from believing in a God, right, is you're, you're, you're stoning homosexuals, you're throwing them off roofs, right? That's the biggest consequence, let's say, okay? Or you're, you're killing people in the name of God or, like, all these terrible things, right? But the biggest consequence of not believing in God is burning in hellfire for eternity. Like, which one is like worse? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, you're, you, it's Pascal's wager. Um, 
but the thing is so, yeah yeah the thing is you and me a god could exist and christians could go to hell muslims could go to hell atheists could go to hell and only like some small sect of some weird religion got it right or maybe all theists maybe you're going to hell for being a theist maybe and i'm going to heaven or not going to hell because i'm an atheist how do you know atheists are not going to heaven and everybody else isn't because a god and this is a lot of christians or theists hear this and they they laugh but really think about this think about okay. our all all powerful yeah. god who looks down at his creation and says all these idiots think that I have anything to do with the Bible. All these idiots think I have anything to do with the Quran. All these idiots think I have anything to do with the Book of Mormon. But it's those atheists have figured out that all religions of the world is false. I'm going to reward them. It makes complete reasonable sense that a intelligent, all-powerful being would think that way. And maybe not all good, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so you ought to be an atheist because you are risking eternal damnation if you don't yeah i you could you could always just flip it I, I i've seen i've seen you do this with pascal's wager a lot i guess my problem with this is like doesn't it make sense for like just just like intuitively like obviously it doesn't have to be the case but like if god has a a, a religion that he has bestowed upon man wouldn't it make sense for that religion to triumph over the others if it's from god doesn't it make the most sense that it would triumph over all the other religions maybe maybe not it depends what this god desires it does but i guess at, at that point again it's like the probability that you're going to get it right anyways is going to be super low maybe this god wants a small membership in fact, Christianity yeah. alludes to that. It does. It does say that. Yes. Uh, and maybe it's the reverse of what you think. The fact that Christianity is so big, the biggest religion in the world, maybe is evidence that it's the false one. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a Christian. <laughs> yeah. I guess, I, I, you said you asked me earlier, what harm can there be in believing in God? Yeah. I, I guess. I guess you've proven. But you've me already wrong. answered your own question when you said you're worried about you're worried about hell yeah there's harm yeah. right there why are you worried i i'm here to relieve you of all your worries i want you to leave this conversation taking a deep breath of air and saying i'm free of this i i don't need to worry another second about this and if god is real he and and if he is all concerned about my eternal well-being he will reveal himself to me and that's that like the default position should be no hell no heaven no gods until he can give you demonstrable evidence that not only you but would convince me and we can say hey you know we didn't we weren't duped we weren't fooled we waited for the good evidence not these books written two thousand years ago that oh claim so and so saw this ah nah that's yeah. garbage we want real stuff we want no, it. yeah. We want I, the moon I, split in two in front of our eyes. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I love, I love that line of reasoning. It's just like I'm not sure if it's the right one. You know, like I respect atheists for like, like if they're genuine. Like I don't, I don't really like anti theists because like anti theists are just like they kind of just want to rob everyone's hope, meaning, and purpose. But like an atheist who really just like questions. And like their default is just on a different side than mine. I can really respect that. So I, I do respect that line of reasoning. Okay, excellent. I'll let you go on that note because All right. we're so friendly to each other. Oh, that's great. <laughs> All right. See I'll ya. see you later. Take care. That was fun. Alejandro wants on. Okay, I'm getting tired, but I'll go five we'll go five minutes. I've talked to, I've talked to you before too, Alejandro. What do you want? Oh, you're worried about hell um, too, right? Yeah, like not as much, but yeah. Oh, you're getting over, you're getting over it. Uh, it sounds really stupid to just keep thinking about this, but like I'm still like reading stuff. But yeah. Well, you know what I've my advice to you was. Um, I forget. Just like forget about it or something. No, no, it's become a Christian. Oh yeah, no, I hate that advice. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this actually goes right into what I wanted to talk to you, uh, you about. Uh, how does the I wouldn't worship God thing, even if he existed, work?
Well, it depends on what type of god it is, but um, like the the one that sends you to hell and stuff. Like you seem to have a problem with that, or did I misunderstand? Yeah, any god that creates uh, that has the properties of um, omniscience and creates knowing that some will reject him and go to hell is an evil god. Yeah. So, uh, are you just cool going to hell then, or in a world where this happens? Or would you like try to make yourself love them? I don't think I can fake it. Like if I mm -hmm. if if I know that this is the case, I don't believe it is. But if I know that's yeah, the yeah. case, uh, I could try to fake it. But this God would know that I'm faking it, and I'd go to hell anyhow. So I'm just doomed. I was a creation yeah, um, meant for destruction. Do you think that um, you could like? So have when did that happen for you? Because at one point you were okay with this, right? When at one when I was a Christian, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So like, did you immediately change your mind when you stopped, or like, did you get upset about it before you stopped, or after, or? Well, uh, no. Uh, basically, uh, your question is basically, how did you leave Christianity, right? No, 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 no. It's specifically like, how did you uh, come to the conclusion that hell is actually not that great? Not that great. Um, I'm. That was like telling not me that bad was, or not ironic. Um. Okay, I, I was just being imprecise with my words. When did you decide that hell is a bad thing? Because you thought that it was a good thing at some point while you were a Christian. And um, at some point you decided that it was a bad thing. Was that like exactly when you stopped being oh, a Christian? Uh, yes, yeah, or? I understand your question now. Thank you. I think it's it was pretty close to when I started really seriously doubting Christianity and maybe mm -hmm. six months afterwards. Yeah. Because so like, when you're a Christian, mm -hmm. you're wearing... God goggles, right? And you don't, you can't really see uh, objectively. But, but I, there are Christians who do think hell is terrible. Well, yeah. Yeah. And like, even they know they're going to heaven, but they still view their God as a bit of a schmuck for having the system. Are they going to heaven if that's true, or is that like a dead fruit or whatever? Well, the, the, no, they're not going to heaven because there is no heaven. <laughs> okay well that changes the subject um but yeah so you would just like uh if you found out that god exists but you can't worship him because like that just doesn't work for you uh you just like spend your time on earth and just be like yeah it's gonna be really bad later and then is that what your outlook would be or yep take your punishment like a man you're not going to be taking it like a man when you're in the glory of god uh you're just going to be really ashamed of yourself because then you'll see like how bad it is to. Are you being serious someone. right now, or are you play um, acting? Well, that's what the narrative is. Like, I think that's fucking ridiculous. But um, yeah, I don't see like how people can like wrap their mind around like sin actually being so bad. I think that they just don't know how to feel like guilty about themselves and like wrap it up appropriately. So they're like, yeah, no, um, this is really bad, but good thing that Jesus died for some reason. Um, but like, yeah, I can't understand like how you can actually think that this is okay. To think um, what's okay. Uh, hell, because like oh. you uh, looked at a woman with lust or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I, this is the reason why I talk about hell often on my channel. This is yeah, why I, I let, that, Because why like, I, people don't talk about it. Um, or they, like they dance around it. I challenge every apologist, every Christian pastor listening right now talk about hell every single Sunday, every Wednesday during Bible studies, every time you go live streaming. Hell, 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 talk about it. Be, and heaven, go ahead with heaven too. But I tell you, if you do what I'm asking you to do, you'll see people leave Christianity. This is why they don't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Except for like some of them sometimes when they want to be dramatic and like be like, hey, we're really tough also. And we grapple. With yeah. Like the Charles, uh, what's his name? I did a video on Charles Lawson. Yeah. The people from, I don't know that guy. The people from Alabama sure. and North Carolina. Yep. Oh, yeah. No, I did see that video actually. Uh, you waking up in hell with nothing around you, but damn. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's yeah, always yeah. going to be people who just need that authority and they're assured that they, they're on the right destination so yeah th th they don't know what to do with me because they agree with me yeah you, Doug's right you should talk about hell every Sunday it's really important right like people need to know about that right yeah but on the other hand they disagree well no they might even agree with me too that 
more people will leave Christianity if you keep preaching hell. They'll probably agree with that. Um, they view well, what I'm doing the as... The ones that we were just talking about, they would be totally cool with that because they... Um, the Have you ever... Do you know who Robert Mori is? No. Um, I heard about him through Psy10 going on your thing, but he made a video called Does God Love Everyone? And he just like was really uh, biblical and rude about it. Um, but yeah, he's That's like... No. The one... What? Yeah, pretty much. Um, he's like, why should God love anyone? First of all, that should be your starting point. Um, but one of the things he said, I don't remember the exact words, but like the one thing that gets in the way of like regeneration and revival is like the non-regenerate humanist cluttering up the pews. So they need to leave and like realize how much they need a savior, then they can come back. But that's an attitude to have about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, Alejandro, I got Logan in here, so I'll talk to him now. All right. See ya. Oh, hey, hello. Hey, Logan, what's up? Hi, I don't know your name. I just popped on here. I don't know. I'm Doug. Um, you're Doug? Hello, Doug. I'm Logan. Uh, <laughs> I've never watched you, friend. I have no idea who you are. Um, how did you find but, me? Uh, recommended. That's how. And By I who? thought you, uh, YouTube. Oh, so okay. I just um, I just clicked it. I was. Um, do you know what I'm? What I do? I'm assuming you're an atheist. Yeah. Um, or agnostic, however you'd like to flavor it. But, um, and you're you do like atheist apologetics, so to speak. You know what I mean? Close or enough. Or the anti anti apologetics, whatever you would say. What do you have to apologize for? Am I right? Yeah. Um, um, Logan, but, I can tell that you hate Jordan Peterson. Am I correct? Oh, because my room's messy. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I I just got <laughs> home from work. Um, my room's a mess. What do you Very do? Disorderly. I'm a cook. Oh. I cook food. Yeah. Are you a good um, cook? How many uh, people have you killed? Uh, I don't know yet. Uh, I'm waiting for the <laughs> report. Uh, no, but um, I. Yeah, I'm a cook at uh, Chipotle. Nothing serious, but um, it's a reputable store. I I'm here to bat for the Christians, actually, um, because it seems to me everyone at least I haven't watched the full stream, so I don't know if you have any Christians on or not. I know you aren't a Christian, or, or you, well, you say you know you went to uh, churches or what have you, um, and that. Um, oh, you've been but, watching a while then. Well, well, I just read the description. Oh, okay. um, but the last two um, people on that I, I saw, um, they weren't Christians, but they were scared of hell, you know, yeah. and then they were um, for whatever reason, they were scared of hell. They, they weren't Christians, though. Um, uh, and it seems like. I think that you guys are wrong, <laughs> uh, and you, I wrote down some things you said or um or in the conversation you you guys were wondering or you were joking and saying that hell is not okay you know you at uh, you're uh, essentially saying that you know it's not cool that god would send us to an eternal punishment um because we're just so rad and hip right what have i done right uh what have i done wrong and then you said and another thing you've been uh, well, let's take these, let's take these one at a time okay so what did okay. you want to say about that okay uh well the hell is hell is okay <laughs> actually it's perfect it's in it's it's just because um when you boil it down what we're going against is a perfect and righteous and just judge who is god uh and we who are broken and sinners so we have sinned against an almighty lord now he is in a just position to send us to eternal damnation or as he sees fit to punish us uh, and it is the same thing with if you break any law, you are deserving of that crime. And because we are all sinners and we've all fallen short of the glory of God, as the Bible has said, it says, and as God has said, um, we are all deserving of hell. And that's essentially on that because that is why hell is okay. Uh, because it's a just punishment. Do you have your for Bible everyone. there? Uh, yeah, I don't. It's it's on my bookshelf. It's right there. You see that hanging yeah, off? Yeah, go grab it. Right there. Uh, I'm not going to. Oh, okay. but I will. I will look up a verse. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, in Second Peter three nine, it says that 
God, the Lord is slow in keeping his, is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Do you believe mm -hmm. that's true? Oh, yeah. Uh, like, yeah, very much so. I do believe it's true. Okay. So you would say that God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Right? Yes. Um, yeah. So God doesn't want anyone to go to hell. Do you believe that God knows who will go to hell before they're born? Yes, because of what you, that's like the um, Calvinist predestination thing or Augustian predestination. I actually have Augustine's uh, confessions right next to me. But um, I do believe that there is, a, um, because we accept our, as Christians that God is mysterious and a lot of atheists like i was an atheist myself you would say that's a cop-out wouldn't you you would say well that's just a cop-out for you know for not the bible not being this very logical very but I, I, I want to stay and focused on on this topic okay. we're talking I about apologize. we talk about hell and you're saying mm -hmm. that's just it's good mm -hmm. yeah and then i asked you does god want anyone to go to hell and i think you said no right god does not want anyone's want does not want anyone to go to hell but we are deserving of hell nonetheless. Okay, so before I was born, mm -hmm. do you believe God knew that I would be born, die a believer, uh, unbeliever, and go to hell? So let's say it's true that I die an unbeliever. Let's say I get in a car wreck tomorrow. I'm an mm -hmm. atheist. I don't. I truly reject. In fact, before you came here, I rejected 13 premises that Christian gave. I truly don't believe any of it's true, and I reject it. Mm -hmm. Let's say I die in a car crash tomorrow. Do you believe I will go to hell? The, un, yeah, unfortunately, okay. yes. Okay. Do you believe God knew that before I was born? Yes. Do you because, believe, okay, yeah. good. Do you believe God created me knowing that? Yes. So, okay, now let's, let's take all those questions and put them together now in one concept. Mm -hmm. God created me knowing mm -hmm. that... I would be born, mm -hmm. live my life, die, and go to hell. And all that could have been prevented if God didn't create me, correct? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. So the reason mm -hmm. why I'm going to hell is because of what God didn't do. He could have just not created me. Mm -hmm. But because he did, knowing what would happen, I will go to hell. But yet it says in Second Peter... 3, 9, that God doesn't want me to go to hell. Yeah. So this is a um, contradiction, is it not? No, because you're what you're missing out on is a very key factor in that. Um, two key factors, actually. Um, secondly, uh, well, firstly, we'll cover the... Um, you're pre-assuming a lot of morals, I believe, and a lot of... Um, and whatnot. Like, um, we assume as Christians, or I'd hope we assume that God is good... And therefore, he gets to decide his own thing. So God, like God, doesn't have to ask you permission to do anything. He could have created you, and you know, for a pit of snakes, if you wanted, um, so to speak. Or he could have created you to starve to death, if he wanted. And that's it. He could have done that because he's the creator. He's the like. Who are you, oh, um, oh, sculpture, to argue with the sculptor? You know what I mean? Yo, lump of clay. Who are you? Um, Okay, but, I'm, but I'm not talking about any of that about me. But second, second point, okay. which more touches on the premise, is that um, he he did do something catastrophic, is that he sent his one and only son to die on, on a cross, Jesus Christ, so that we may be saved by simply believing on his name. Okay, I, well, but all this has nothing to do with my, my question to you, because mm -hmm. you said that God doesn't want me to go to hell, mm -hmm. but you also said God created me knowing that I will. Mm -hmm. Well, he knew. Well, of course he knows because he's God. I don't want to discredit right. what he knows, but we also can't discredit the fact that he sent his son to die for us on a cross. Right, but he knew that he also gave me free will, and he knew that I would reject it. Therefore, I go to hell. So you said God doesn't want me to go to hell, yet God mm -hmm. created me, which he didn't have to, created me knowing that I would. Again. He says he's patient, but after the death, after you die, that patience runs thin. Right. And you're and you you face your just punishment. He now, saw what would happen 
-hmm. he created me anyhow, knowing that I'll go to but hell. As well as... Right? I mean, if if that's the case sure yeah <laughs> i mean yeah because he can he can quite literally do what he wishes so now he here's the question god. does god really want me to go to hell no and he made it manifest by the fact that he he sent his only son to die then why did he create me or he's uh for his own pleasure and goodwill but it's he, he by no creating me create by creating me and he knows that i will reject him mm -hmm. out of my own free will he knows i will reject him by simply, well, by simply creating me, he's doomed me to hell. You're also assuming that you'll um, forever be like unsaved, as well. After but, death. Um, after, well, yeah. If if like, I mean, yeah. But some people he wishes to die and go to hell because he is God. He gets to do what he wishes. Um, but no, you said that you agree with Second Peter that he doesn't want people to go to hell. Right? Yeah, I don't think he wants us to die in our sin, no. Right. So what you yeah, just said but, is wrong then, because you said just now that God does want some people to go to hell. So which is it? Well, he does command every man in um, to repent and believe the gospel as well. But I don't think he's going to intervene with our wills either. Because, I mean, that would be terrible, wouldn't it, if God intervened with our will as well? Um, but no, but he commands that every man believe and uh, believe the gospel and repent and draw nigh on to him. And he he made it manifest in the fact that he Christ descended down and died for us are on the you, cross. Are you, you look like a young guy. Are you married? No. Okay. Well, imagine you're married and you had a the choice to use your free will to have kids mm -hmm. but let's say god you find out from god that if you have a child that child will grow up reject the gospel and end up in hell would you and your wife have that child yeah i would because it's commanded that we be fruitful and multiply and i will trust god to get uh get me through that that's a that is a actually that's a strange question because i would not it's not a pragmatic question because there's no way i would know uh, that's no, in this thought experiment you do know you do know that if you have a child mm -hmm. that child will go to hell did, and did i hear you right did you want to change your answer no i don't think so because it's we're commanded to be fruitful and multiply if i had a wife we'd be having children uh, and we'd have several children okay let and, me get this straight hell mm -hmm. what's your view of hell is it really bad Hell is extremely bad. It's a perfect and just uh, punishment for the sins of man. Okay, hell is extremely bad. Mm -hmm. You would have a child that you would know because God told you that if you have this child, mm -hmm. it will end up dying and going to this extremely bad place. I, I think I reject your premises because it's not pragmatic. It's not an actual question. Um, well, it's a hypothetical it's, question. It's hypothetical, but I reject your premises because there's Which no Which premise do you reject? that i would that god would send me a private revelation i there's no way i would know that my son or daughter would go to hell for sure that's a part of the trusting in god part of religion of the christian faith now i did abraham know for sure that god told him to sacrifice his son isaac yeah he did okay he so, per, so it is possible to have revelation that's sure right yeah but not anymore oh that stopped when did that stop yes it stopped at the um a death of last apostle how do you know that it stopped then uh because it says so in the bible where and because jesus says so that's why um where i don't actually um know the exact verse in in chapter but where, i do know where did that, jesus say that that he will stop revealing himself for sure to people probably where in revelation he um said that he was going to uh, come a second time he revealed the last revelation of jesus christ okay but that's at the end times i'm talking about right now how, how do you but know he for revealed sure? it, he revealed it to john um and he said and in revelations and as well as the apostles they said if they if anyone add any dot or tittle to this um gospel let him be forsaken and they even included themselves in it and i believe in revelation it says that if anyone adds anything to the scriptures let him be forsaken do you know for um, sure that you're a christian 
yeah, because I'm saved by grace and and faith uh, by grace alone through faith alone in my Savior Jesus Christ, because he wrote he died and rose from the dead. But how do you know? Is, how do you how me of my how salvation. do you know that for sure? That because he because I have assurance of salvation in um in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Yeah, but how do you know that's true? Um, because he died and rose from the dead and then implanted his Holy Spirit in me, exchanging my heart of stone with a heart of flesh. Okay, how do you changing. know that he died and rose again? Because there's multiple accounts and witness testimony, as well as the testimony of my heart and spirit. Okay, this is, this. we're, we're off hell now and we're going to talk about this. So let's okay. talk about Jesus and the resurrection. I, it's my favorite subject. Excellent, me too. <laughs> well, no, it's not. You hate Jesus. You wake up every day, and you know what you do? You wake up every day and you curse Jesus's name. You say, "I forgot to do I, that today, though." Yeah, you say, "I hate that guy." I forgot you know, to do it today. Yeah, you, yeah, you look up into the sky and you're like, "Oh, woe is me! How could you create me?" That's what you. Are say. you being serious yeah. right now? I'm curious, or are we both joking? I'm I'm joking, but okay. partly serious because I do think you you have a hatred for Christ, but you just you you may know it. You may say you do. But you, you okay? But my you my do. love or hatred of Christ is irrelevant mm -hmm. here when it comes to mm -hmm. Jesus's resurrection. Yeah. And, and I asked you why do you believe Jesus rose from the dead, and you said because of. I because well, so you're gonna, you're so you're gonna say you're gonna be like okay, so you're gonna try to mu muddy the waters here. You're gonna say the witnesses aren't real. They're gonna say okay, so you can't trust these eyewitnesses. The book was written thousands I'm of years ago, and, and but here's the thing, friend. My my belief in Christ does not rely on the witness, does not rely on man's witness. It relies on the fact that the Holy Spirit implanted himself in me. Okay, let's talk about that then. You know Jesus Christ rose from the dead because of the Holy Spirit in you, right? Yes. How, why and do you believe the Holy Spirit is in you? Because or I Or that a Holy Spirit even exists. Well, because it says so in the Bible, which is God's because word. Because it says, let me write this. Yeah, let me write this down. Because it You're, says so in the Bible. It's circular reasoning, by the way. That's why. And you, yeah, it's circular reasoning. Okay, why do you believe the Bible is correct about the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit has confirmed that the Bible is correct in me. Okay. You know that the Holy Spirit's in you because it says so in the Bible, and you know the mm -hmm. Bible is right about the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit told you. Well, so to speak, that the Holy Spirit, there, there, it is partly circular reasoning, but it's, it, there's almost like a, it's like a, it, it's like a question mark, not question mark. It's like a circle with a little line drawn out of it, because I would not have believed the Gospels or the, um, mainly let's focus on the go Gospels, but this is the Scriptures altogether. I would not have believed the Scriptures if I would have not heard the Word of God. And I would have not believed the word of God if not God himself made me believe the word of God. So it is it is circular reasoning, but there is that little line out of there that, that says that God himself took out my heart of stone okay. and made a heart of flesh. Would you say, would you let other religions use circular reasoning, reasoning to say that what they believe is true? Would you allow um, that for them? No, because mine is true. <laughs> there I mean, we yeah. go. No, it's true. But but here's the thing. Okay, so you laugh. <laughs> Someone clip funny. that. <laughs> it, do it because it's true. It is. It's real. But that's the thing. It is real because you can say things are real and they are real. I mean, are we? I I I respect science. So to science and evidence and all that fun stuff as much as the next guy. I love it. I can't get enough of it. But there is reality right and the reality of certain matters is the matter itself you can say well this next to me that's a bed i mean isn't it self-evident isn't this a pencil you know it's made out of wood you know this is just fact these are true things and it is just the truth like it is just the truth that the christian religion is true you know what you're on to something here logan i really like what you just said like behind you is a bed. That's real. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. Let's say yeah. someone really stupid came in here and wanted to question that and say, well, how do I really know there, there's a bed mm -hmm. behind there? Well, what, what are some things you and I could tell this person or show this person to, sh to convince them that the bed's actually there? Well, if they were, 
So say this person walked in, I was like, come to my, I was like, he's like, okay, where's the bed? I want to see the bed. And, and then I was like, come and see. Right. And then I come and I, I and he came into my room and I showed him the bed. I'm like, touch this bed, feel this okay. bed, you know, touch, and then it's like, you know, feel. smell this, smell this bed, bro. <laughs> I don't know you if know? I want to smell and, it. But then he was like, okay, this is an amazing bed. You know, let me write down this bed and my witnessing of this bed. Not only let me write down the, the witnessing of the bed, but there are, but there were, you know, hundreds of people beforehand that wrote down prophecies of this bed and in history of miracles made by this bed and made down specific claims of this bed. And this bed just so happens to by multiple different people to have fulfilled those prophecies verbatim and to have done miracles and not even seen by those who believed in this bed because you know some people could say it's not a bed and then these people that said it wasn't a bed came in and they saw him like raise a man from the dead you know or i don't know made water to wine walk on water because it's just you know it's just a bed anyhow and then and they were like oh wow this is crazy let's write this down and not only is this bed did they see these miracles but this bed was you know um <laughs> tortured under government rule and those records were written down and there was a description of this bed um that would be crazy then you would know almost for sure that this bed existed and then if you try to criticize the existence of this bed right we could you know use all different kinds of historical accounts and compare them and what we believe commonly like historical accounts of caesars historical accounts of like i don't know poets for example or anyone and we could compare them and be like, okay, so we believe that that chair exists only because there's like, what, two pages somewhere of this chair existing, but because there's, you know, but because we don't want to believe this bed hey, exists, Logan. even though there's thousands of documents, let's not believe this bed exists. That would be a good way Logan. to prove this bed exists, I think. Yeah, you said a lot there. You're excited. <laughs> I think that would be a great way. But you know, notice the first things you said about the bed is you touch the bed, feel the bed, smell mm -hmm. the bed, see the bed. Have you touched Jesus, felt Jesus, smelled Jesus? Saw Lutherans Jesus? would say I have, and Catholics would. Because have, I have, I've taken sacraments before. So they would say I've smelled and touched and even tasted the Lord. No, but would you say that you've touched Jesus? Uh, do you mean physically touched his yeah. body? Yeah, like you no. did the bed. Did you no. feel Jesus like you could feel a bed? No. Did you smell Jesus like you could smell your bed? No. Did you see Jesus like you can see your bed? Yeah, in my dreams. <laughs> no, I haven't. Yeah. Obviously. You know, you know definitely where you're leading me. And I know where you're leading me to this question. You're like, you're like, have you have you done the scientific theory or whatever it's called to prove that Jesus exists? No, sir, I haven't. It's supernatural and it's mysterious and it's and it's sacramental. Obviously, no. But I know Jesus and he knows me because he has his word and he implanted himself into my heart. I don't need some scientific theorem to prove that Christ exists. Even though the science is there, I don't need man's wisdom. I have God's wisdom and that's all I need. And it's, and it's satisfactory. What do you think? You know, what's, what's what, also, there's a lot of Christians who have left Christianity and became atheists. What would your life look like if you were one of them? What do you think how your life would change? I would have shot myself and I would have died. I would have hung myself and killed myself and I would be dead and in hell suffering forever, a just punishment. Why do you think that's true that you would shot, have shot yourself if you left because Christianity? There's no, because there's no reason to live without Christ. Because if there is no ever, if there is no forever more, if there is no living God, if there is no good grace, goodness in this world, then this world is nothing. Then we ought to just destroy it frankly because what's the point i mean honestly what's the point i mean we didn't even we haven't even touched the moral existential uh crisis of atheism um but what's the point honestly what would be the second the best reason to live let's say christianity is false or let's say mm -hmm. you became an atheist tomorrow what would be the second 
reason to uh, keep living other than Jesus? Oh, uh, live for live for uh, carnal pleasures like uh, masturbation and sex and uh, eating and um, and I don't know um, killing babies or something. I don't know. Well, what do you atheists do? You know what I mean? Like what like what would you live for? What do you live for now? Like what sex? You know, like was that the is that the penultimate? Hey, I'm a married guy with two kids. I get meaning and purpose and hope from watching my kids but, grow up. But but see that is but that's a borrow from our worldview. That's a borrow from God. You see, you go by your worldview, then you have no reason. Well, you only have reason to reproduce because you will um, like get taken care of when you're old. You know what I mean? That's like the only reason I can think of logically. I mean, you could probably come up with more. Maybe like, I don't know. like well, To live vicariously through your kids. See, that's what I mean. But or, you know, have a wife. Like why even get married? Like for the law, maybe because society or whatever or maybe because but wouldn't that be know, good good enough reason for you to stay living no because i'm i me personally i'm not like i'm not i mean you know you have your own re you would find your own reasons and you'd find your own like way of coping but i would know i would because of how existential and um and intelligent i am uh excuse me excuse me but um but that's that's partly what i mean i would mean that i would be stuck in my own head too much and i would just die I would just die. There would be no reason for me to live. It's like, um, it's the it's the ultimate um, end and end and be all of man, is just to die. I mean, and you wouldn't disagree. You would say that at the end of the day, we all just die and we're space dust and you know we're we're stardust that farts or whatever. <laughs> you know, like Rick I, I would say with the Lion. Have you ever seen the Lion King musical? Yeah, like the the circle of life. Oh yeah, isn't that beautiful? That musical. Uh, yeah, I I like it. Yeah. I thought it was cool, but um, but I mean, yeah, you'd say the circle of life, but like you know, tigers eat each other, monkeys eat each other, you know, etc. Yeah. Just eat each other. Why not eat one another? Well, Logan, because... what can I do? What can I do to help you to be a better Christian? Um, you could um, you could. Here's one thing. I don't want you to help me be a better Christian. I want you to help society. Okay. And here's a couple lists. Um, list. Uh, so step one, repent and believe the gospel. Step two, stop uh, uh, presumably eating and killing babies. Step three. <laughs> I don't know if you're being serious or if you're joking. <laughs> step, uh, uh, step three. Um, I don't know, like enjoy Jesus and God and, and be a light, be a light onto the nations um, and pray. I think that's step three. Step two is important though. You could do step two before you did step one, but I don't think you would. I think it would take step one before you do step two and then step three would come. So you want me to repent, stop eating babies and enjoy Jesus? And killing babies. Oh, kill me. I don't kill babies. Yeah. Kidding. I'm kidding, obviously. I don't think you're a baby killer yet. And with but... the repent one, like could you can you make a decision right now to stop believing in Jesus? Right now. Can you do it? Um, no, because that would be impossible. Because okay. he's why said... is it but do you think it's so. possible for me to just start believing in Jesus right now? Uh a little by your thought process no you would you you think you make a decision right you would say you would say oh well i believe in that christ guy you know i could i could lay out all the evidence in the world right okay so imagine here's an example. you know hang on logan logan you've been talking a lot right Have you, yeah. do, you, do you admit this i like talking i know but do you admit that you've talked like 90 yes. percent of the time okay yeah i apologize i'll okay. let you talk so that's what we're getting i i'm going to tell you why i'm not a christian Mm -hmm. And then you can tell me what you think about it. I'm not mm -hmm. a Christian because I don't think the evidence is sufficient to match the claim. Mm -hmm. I don't think that simply because a book says there's certain witnesses and certain prophecies of Jesus um, and that Jesus rose from the dead, uh, I don't think that's sufficient to say that a man 2,000 years ago claimed to be God, was actually God, claimed to do these miracles, that the miracles actually happened. I just don't think it's anything close to being sufficient. And so I would need something today, something that today that would convince me that Jesus is God and, and rose from the dead for my sins, and that there's a heaven and hell, something that 
that today that would convince me is a prayer. Like if someone prayed for something amazing, and it has to be really amazing because I have high standards. And the first amazing thing that I can think of that's also very simple is if, um, hang on a second. Do you believe in prayer? Yeah. Do you believe that God answers prayers? According to his will. Do you believe that sometimes God answers prayers and does miracles so people might have their confidence increased and so they believe? I believe that um, the miracles that you're looking for will probably not happen until Revelation. So do you think God does miracles today? Yes, by the by and but it's a um, the miracles are the miracle. There's one miracle that for sure God does, and it's the exchanging from the heart of stone with the heart of flesh. Right. But do you believe that God, let's say someone, a parent has a sick child and they're a Christian, they pray to God for the child to be healed, that God does it? Um, according to his will, yes. Yeah. So yes. that it, it, it does happen. Um, but you're so. If I may, I believe where we're stepping off here is you're thinking that the man or the woman praying is saying is essentially com commanding God. No, I may be wrong. So asking me politely. Mm -hmm. Do you believe um, that a Christian can ask politely for God to do a miracle and that he sometimes does? Oh, yeah. But it's always according to his will. Right. And I think that that makes sense. I okay. Think I, so this is what would change my mind about Christianity. And it's and I base it off of scripture. So this is water. Mm -hmm. And in 1 Kings 18, we have a story of Elijah who is proving to non-believers and skeptics that his God is real and their gods are fake. Awesome. And so he gets, they each get piles of wood. And in Elijah's pile of wood, he not only gets the wood, but he soaks it in water. Mm -hmm. So let's let this mm -hmm. uh, Kleenex represent wood because it's basically made out of wood. And mm -hmm. so he soaks the wood in water. And then he calls upon God in the heavens to mm -hmm. uh, light this on fire. And if you would ask God on my behalf, yes. We can try it right now. And if this lights up, I'm not trying to fool myself. I know this is real water. Mm -hmm. Even if people on the live stream can't know it, I do. Yeah. And I'm not trying to trick myself. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to pray to Jesus right now to have this light on fire? Um, you know what I'm going to answer? It says also in the scriptures, Satan, do not tempt the Lord thy God. No, I wouldn't because it's foolish. I'm not going to tempt the Lord thy God. Okay. Why do you think that's tempting? Because I'm at, I'm I'm essentially I'm answering a fool's folly, which also the Lord says not to do. Okay, what if I told you that I have a son named John? Mm -hmm. He's dying of cancer. Would you pray for my son? Yeah, that course. he would be healed. Mm -hmm. Why would you pray for that and not this? Because you're because that is for your. I'm not meaning to insult you, but that's for your selfish realization this is for my or, eternal or, security or, and he has provided evident proof and which is in the lord jesus christ and his death burial and resurrection now your son's um illness is is completely different situation i am not going to tempt my god by saying but why is it different because god has provided already as he sees fit reasonable evidence and no he no no sees i understand you already said that but why would you pray for my son to be healed of cancer he doesn't by the way i'm just giving this as okay. a hypothetical why would you pray to to god for him to heal my son of cancer as a miracle mm -hmm. but not as a miracle to light up my water soaked napkin because um i would pray for your salvation what if this which would lead I, to my salvation? Which I do every night, by the way. Not you in particular, but the unsaved. But because it won't, I don't think. How? Because you don't think, or you know? No, I don't think. But I actually, actually, I kind of do know. Unless, unless God Himself had went into your heart and changed it, I don't think it would. No. Doesn't God use miracles to show who mm -hmm. who He is? A lot of the time, when God used miracles, save for maybe. Uh, Christ's miracles. It was more so to submit 
that submit that he was God. You know what I mean? Not set, not and to and to keep his people with him. I think Logan. It's um, a very simple question. Did did people in the New Testament ever see Jesus do a miracle and end up following him because of that miracle? Yeah. Yeah. Why but, couldn't um, that happen to me? Because, friend. Douglas, if you will, uh, <laughs> Dr. Doug, uh, because he has made himself proven in Jesus Christ, in his death, burial, and resurrection, and in, the, and in the continuance of the Holy Spirit and his bride, the church. So he needs no reason to do so. He has provided you evidence. He's provided you it, but you haven't accepted it. Now, it's okay, if, if there's no reason to do so, then mm -hmm. why would he heal my son of cancer if he had cancer? Because he loves your son. Doesn't he love me? He loves me? you. Yeah, he does. Okay. And if it's true that my whole worldview would be shattered if you prayed and this lit up right now, that's true. And I started following Jesus. We're not talking about just my son's physical life. We're talking about my eternal life. Yeah. Isn't that more important than my son's physical body? Yes, sort of. I don't like splitting hairs with that, but yeah. Right. So I don't like a high. Why wouldn't God do that? Um, well, I could still also, choose to reject him, right? Also, I we I would like to preface everything I or things like this with high, with these hypotheticals that I'm the mold, not the molder. You know, I who am I to tell God why he does something or why he doesn't do something? But with evidence of scripture and what he's provided in revelations, I can say that I well, well, let's go back. You asked why I wouldn't pray for that to happen if the in if the in if the end result was the um the salvation of your soul now it's one of those situations where i'm rejecting your premises because that isn't going to happen what's not going I'm, to happen uh well firstly i'm not going to pray that that happens because i would be tempting my god secondly why aren't you tempting that, your god when you ask my son to be healed of cancer because it's according to his will what if it's according to his will that he that it light up? You don't know this. I do know. How do you know? Because he has provided reasonable. He has provided reasonable, reasons to believe. Yeah, but reasons why to believe. He, already, why would friend? he heal my son of cancer, which you had said that that sometimes happens? If 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 my son had cancer and you prayed for him that he'd be healed, and if I became a Christian because of that, would you be saying the same stuff you're saying now? Well, he's provided the scriptures. I'm not going to pray for your son that he's healed for cancer, even well, if it might would, lead to your salvation. Like you wouldn't become um, a Christian because your son was healed, necessarily. You would become a Christian. I mean, I mean, you know, if if God was like here, My see, we're goodness, getting Logan. we're getting into listen, we're getting into sinful territory here because I'm trying starting to like say you know if God was like but anyhow, if if your son was healed miraculously of cancer through what have you, then, you know, God, you know, praise the Lord, right? But you also probably wouldn't see it like that because you're an atheist. And what secondly, if I did? What if, if I became did, a Christian? And that was that. God doing it on himself, for himself, his yes. will being, being right. um, displayed. Yeah. But so What's I think- What's the I difference think between that and lighting this up on fire? Um, because that's silly is why. <laughs> because it's silly. No, no, no. Provided, Logan, please provided. be quiet right now. Let me, please be quiet. I, I'm not meaning to be upset with you, but I think I really need to press you I on like this. how excited we're getting. The reason why you are okay for praying for my son with cancer and not for this water soap napkin to be lined on fire is because with the cancer one, you can hide the results. You can, there are remissions. There is, the cancer's inside and it's, and they are taking drugs or chemo, whatever. It with this, there is no such hiding it. It is mm -hmm. this is full of water. Water doesn't burn on its own. And if this is yeah. a the breakage of the law of physics, this is why you're against because you know, I think deep down that your God is not going to do it. Um you're also right with the not going to do it because he's not going. No, your to explanation is because God doesn't well. work that way. My explanation is because your God doesn't exist. Sir, if I may, um, like I've said before and added, who are you to command the Lord thy God? I am well, Pine maybe, Creek. That's who. 
Pine Creek. Who's that? That's me. Is that your name? Yeah. Well, that's my. YouTube Is that your name. last name? That's oh. my YouTube name. Well, you're nothing, friend. I mean, in the best way. So possible, when you ask really who am I to ask God to do stuff, I am Pine Creek, a sentient being. That's who. You're sentient. That <laughs> no, I, I mean, who? Can, but what does that matter? Oh, I don't matter. No, you don't matter. No, no, you don't don't matter. This a double <laughs> negative. I do matter. You do matter if you yeah. will. Thank you. But well, I was, you know. Um, well, no, I, what I'm saying is it's like going up to a judge in, or not a judge, but it's like going up to an artist and telling him to do his art a certain way. You have no right to do that. It's his art. I'm asking the artist to do creation. his art a certain way. Yeah, it's his creation and he will do what, well, well, there's a difference between asking in like faithfulness and then there's commanding. Right. You I'm not commanding. I'm asking. Well, well, you're saying, okay, listen, you may think you're asking politely, but God has revealed in his scriptures and he saw fit that it's ne that the necessity. But I don't believe there, that's true. I don't think the scriptures are true. But, but then why would you believe if like lightning struck something and lit it on because fire? Because it's there's something plenty, today. There's plenty of miraculous things that happen in the world. And we explain them away with science. Now, God works through science. About everything he does is, uh, for the most part, in the natural world is scientific, so to speak. If not this... Logan, if this lit on fire, I know what this is. Now, you yes. might not know. The people in the but, live stream audience might not know, but I do. I yeah, know this is don't... nothing more than a Kleenex and water. And if you prayed right now, and if this started on fire and burnt my hand, my whole worldview is shattered. I am no longer a naturalist. I guarantee it. I'm not lying to you. Naturalist. I'll show you naturalist. <laughs> yeah. <Sorry. laughs> no, but uh, I mean, I, I feel like I've answered that question. And I feel like I'm just going to answer it over and over again. I feel like God, and I'll say it again, just for the, the audience that God has provided um, the, the necessary for the salvation of mankind. And he sees Who's your favorite no, apologist. My favorite apologist is um, I was trying to think of a funny answer, but seriously, my favorite apologist is probably um, I like, I like Douglas Wilson. I like James White. I like Augustine. I like um, Calvin. I like. Are you a Calvinist? Um, by the most, uh, I'm a ref I'm reformed. I'm not a Calvinist. There are a lot of. I don't know if you've studied. How can you be reformed and not a Calvinist? Almost. Well, because um, well, because the like you know like the tulip or yeah. whatnot that came about after Calvin. That was that, but that was just an answer to Armenians necessarily. It doesn't include all. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, everything you said, I'm, I'm calling into question because I got to ask you this. Questions? Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm sassy. I apologize. Can I can I repent if God doesn't do anything in me first? No, probably not. Oh my goodness, you're in trouble. I'm not concrete on it. I'm not concrete on you're it. You're in I trouble, know. Logan. But here's the thing: I trust that Lord, the Lord would do as he sees feet fit to do so. right so the only way i you the you i asked you earlier what are some things i can do to help you become a better christian because i don't want you to kill yourself repent and believe the gospel okay repent was the first thing <laughs> and you believe said believe the gospel logan repent was the first thing you said yeah and repent I, of your false and now beliefs. you just told me that i can't even do that unless god does something to me first right that's so true. Maybe this is God doing something in you. Maybe he sent me to yell at Maybe, you on stream. But the, <laughs> the fact of the matter is you believe that I can't repent on my own free will, that God has to do something in me first, and then I can repent. Correct? Repent from, um, like, false religion, yeah. But you can change your mind. But can I become a Christian unless God does something in me first? No. No, you can't. No, so if I a, die an unbeliever, it's because of what God didn't do. No, it's because of what you did. No, I why can't do God, it unless God does it did, me wait, first. Wait, 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 wait. We're losing track here. Okay. No, no, no. Let, no listen, you're listen, in huge trouble. You're, you're now. putting, you're putting the, the, the tail before the dog or the tail after the dog, you know, you're, what you're doing is you're, you're putting it out of sequence is what you're doing. What you came first, God or me? God came right. first, but you're what the What comes one, first in salvation, Adam, God or me? 
Adam's race is we are the ones who first sinned against uh, all holy Logan, and righteous God. Can I become a Christian without God doing something to me first? No, but you sinned first, friend. You went away from the Lord. I understand. God the default first. position is hell. I'm going to hell. The default position is yes. hell. I sin. So here's my yeah. question. Now, why does God have to save you? He has no obligation. To my question, him. Logan, is this. Can I become a Christian without God doing something to me first? No. So that means when I, if, if, if I were to die a non-believer, it's because me. God didn't do something in me. No, it's because you're a sinner. No, I said heaven, not hell. Christian, heaven. Yeah, but, okay, so I'll, here, here's an example. It would be like you, uh, like you lived with your, parents right and then you like you punched your dad in the face and then you were like and he like pushed you out of the house right and then you were like can i come back in can i come back in and then got and then you were like and your dad was like no and you were like why you're you're not letting me come back in that's crazy what you're you're choosing not to let me so in that's if crazy. i if i change my if god changes my heart yes can i reject him by definition no oh you're in trouble well, and you don't even realize how much trouble you're in. Why? Because basically, anybody who goes to hell is because of what your God didn't, I didn't do. Know that I was in trouble. Anybody, your God's responsible for every person in hell. <clears throat> um, no, I reject that. But I was about to say, praise the Lord. But kind of true, praise the Lord. Um, that that people are getting their just punishments. That is a good thing. Um, but do you agree with good... that statement? There's two, there's heaven and hell, nothing else, right? Well, there's the earth in between, right? But so to speak. But but when people die, or maybe you're Catholic, but heaven and hell. Yeah, there's heaven and hell. After the first, after your death, you right. either descend down to hell or you ascend to heaven. Okay, so basically, in the default position is hell, right? Everybody goes to hell unless they're saved, like Hades. But yeah, yeah. And the only way they can be saved and go to heaven is if God does something in them first, regenerates their heart, they mm -hmm. accept Christ, repent, all that, and they go to heaven. Correct? You've you've obviously heard a couple sermons. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, you're not yeah. talking to a schmuck here. I, I I probably know the Bible better than you do, Logan. I don't think you're a schmuck. I, mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you do, but I, I, I don't think you're So you agree with me, right? Everything I just said um, you agree with. Default position, hell. Heaven. Mm -hmm. The only way you get to heaven yeah, is if God regenerates your heart. And then you repent and you're saved. You take up your cross, all that stuff. You go to heaven, right? Um, and I don't you, think if God doesn't do that, you go to the hell. taking the taking up of the cross is not necessarily necessary for salvation. Okay, that is I threw that in for the non calvinists just so they feel good. Um, but uh, uh, who cares? Am I right, Calvinist gang? But um, anyhow, uh, no, yeah, you're you're right. But there's a step you're forgetting, which is that we sinned against a just and righteous God. I already no, I didn't forget. That was the default position well, I gave. Yeah, we're we're deserving of His punishment, and that's what we should get. I, even though I am pardoned by His, yeah, we've uh, blood, heard this already. I deserve we know this. that. We know all this. Well, Logan. well, it's you know, it's good to point out again because we've lost track. I, I believe um, that we are deserving of His punishment, and it is good. We're deserving of something that, that God created, punishment. knowing that would happen. Yeah. Would there, there's a, would there be any a, hey, Logan? Would there be any sin if if God never created? Then again, Logan, even if there can you answer my question? No, of course not, right. silly man. But, but we have sin because matter. God created, right? It doesn't matter because God can do as He wills, for He is God. How do you know you're a Christian? Oh wow, I wonder. <laughs> Maybe because I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and He has implanted His Holy Spirit in me. Aren't there people who have said stuff like that? Flesh. Can a person say that and not be a Christian? Yeah. How do you know you're not that person? Because I, tr because you know what? Because I trust the Lord. I think I don't know. I are there I people on the God. planet who trust who say they trust the Lord and still go to hell? If they confess in their mouth and believe in their heart that the, that the Lord Jesus Christ is who He says He is, then they are saved. Are you sure? Can a, yes. Can a person confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and not be saved? Yeah, because they did not confess in their heart. Right. So can a person say the words you just said and actually end up going to hell? Yeah. Like how, how do you know you're not going to hell? Um, because you said those words. 
you know how I know I'm not going to hell, Doug? Yeah. It's because the Lord died for me on a cross no. and has pardoned me from my sins. He died sins. for the elect, and you're not one of them. Uh, actually, he died for the whole world. <laughs> if he died for the whole world, then the whole world would go to heaven. Yeah, but he but he died for those who would believe. Right, and and I'm saying that you're yeah, a false believer. Nature. I'm he saying you're a false his, believer, Logan. He died for Israel. He died for his, his bride. How do you know you're not a false believer? Because I simply am not. This is a matter of the truths and the falsehoods discussion that we had earlier. Can someone some things be some things are false? Can can someone be deceived in thinking they're a true believer and not? If they do, they have a false gospel. Like Rome, for example. Right, but couldn't they believe they have a true gospel, be deceived? Yeah, but it's just a matter of the true. And How the do false. you know you're not that person? Because I don't have a false gospel. Yeah, but wouldn't that be what uh, uh, someone who's deceived when they say the same thing? Well, yeah, I'd imagine yeah. anyone. So how do you know you're not deceived? You can't know, can you? Because it's a matter. I do know because I have assurance of it in the scriptures. Can someone say they have assurance and still end up in hell? Actually, you'll find that a lot of the. Um, can someone say they have assurance and end up in hell? I'm trying to answer your question. Yes, lean yes, lean no. I well, I also reject your dichotomy here. Um, but the <laughs> see, I'm well, being hard on you thing. for a reason. And I'm I'm ref because but you're setting up some false premises. See, so here's the thing. Here's the thing, Jack, like Biden, for example. Uh, anyhow, but here's the thing, Doug. That um, no, a lot of you'll find a lot of the false gospels, for example, do not actually have an assurance of salvation. The true gospel inherently has an assurance of God, of salvation that it is of it is of the free will of God that is the grace of God that it is um, through Christ alone no you know no one else um, so I would I do believe that the true gospel inherently has those in there and you know the true gospel because it is it relies on Christ alone it is of the free will of God it is by grace alone through belief in his in his son. So I no I I think there it's easy to be deceived but in those deceitful gospels you will find nothing like the true gospel. Did I answer your question? Nope. What, because you, you could say everything you're saying right now and still be doomed to hell. Um, yeah, if I didn't truly believe, but I do. It's one of those one of those yeah. truths in the false but, things. But there's a lot of people who say they That's truly fine. believe. I mean, it's not fine, and, but it's okay. And truly believe that they're going to heaven and end up in hell, right? Lord, Lord, haven't we done miracles in your name? Cast out demons. And the Lord said, surely I never knew you. Get ye behind me. How do you know you're not that person, Logan? Because I'm not. Because when I walk up to Jesus, I'm not going to say... Hey, Oh, haven't I done miracles and prophesied in thy name? I'm going to say, thank God you saved me, Lord. Thank you. I was not deserving of this. And the Lord I'm said, an and then the Lord will reply to you, Logan, I know what you thought of this morning when you got out of bed. I, yeah, I see and, your lustful thoughts, Logan. Yeah, and then you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to say, I'm sorry, Lord. Forgive me. Thank God for the blood that you shed All on that cross. All those who live like Calvary this shall filled. not inherit the kingdom of heaven. And you're living yes. your life this but, way, Logan. But those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. Yes. and But the thing is, only God knows who's the true believer. That's so true. So that excludes you. No, it doesn't. Because I, I just am, said I, only God knows the true believer, and you said that's true, and then oh, and me. Well, okay, I may have I may have been confused what you meant. Are you saying that it excludes? Do I know a true? I'm believer? saying that you do not know that you are saved. Yeah, but uh, well, I do because I know you do not. Salvation. Can you see the future, Logan? Yeah, I can. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> How do you know five years from now? Some tragedy event will happen in your life, and you will curse God and die. How do you know? That I was never a, a Christian. If I truly okay, cursed, I don't care about whether whether you're really a Christian or not. But the point still being, you're here today saying what you're saying, and you'll end up in hell if what I said is true. So you do not have assurance of heaven. I think I do. I think you don't. 
<laughs> well, aren't we at an impasse here? And, aren't we at a my fork reasons, in the road? <laughs> my reasons are because you're not omniscient. You do not see the future. You cannot tap into yeah. the mind of God and yeah. know for sure that you're one of his elect. You do sin on a daily basis. That I know true. you do. That is so true. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, and, you're right. I mean, and there's people who right. have talked just like you who are no longer Christians. And who cares if they were uh, ever a true Christian to begin with? The point I'm making is that you can sit here and spout all you want and still end up in hell. Right? Um, right. No, because I'm saved. <laughs> That's what a deceived person would say. Thanks for yeah, coming, I Logan. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. I'm bad. <laughs> All right, stop what you're doing, because I'm about to ruin the image and the style that you're used to. Oh, my. Why do I do that? What well, the poor guy. Why did I do that? He told me he'd shoot himself if he left Christianity, and then I'd do that. Why did I do that if he's saying he's suicidal if he... Leaves Christian. Stay a Christian, Logan. My goodness. Thank you, Justin Lewis. Doug, this guy is showing me that Calvinist Christianity might have some special appeal to those who suffer from sincere self-loathing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen, Justin. And not just Calvinism. I mean... You think Logan is special? No. Logan is not special. There are millions of people just like Logan who desperately, desperately, desperately need, need, need this. It's so revolting to me, the neediness, the insecurities. It's the weakness. Ugh. So unattractive, this weakness. Crumple female. I thought Doug wasn't going to use the uh, atheist experience method. What are you talking about? Hanging up on people? I've hung up on people many times. If you don't like it, leave. Yes, me, 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 me. Thanks for donation, RB. I'm actually getting a headache. I've been going too long. So this is the last two minutes. Just become a Christian pastor so we can be taught correctly on how to apply the words of the, in the book. <laughs> I'd be a good Christian pastor, I think. I think I could lead people to Jesus better than most pastors. That's why Kenny prophesied the way he did. Because he, he saw that in me. That water went to your head. Still part of me thinks, is Logan just nutso or is he trolling? I don't know. I think nutso. <laughs> oh, sorry, but it's true. Poof. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out. How long do we go? Three hours, 38 minutes. Not bad. Not bad at all.